Because this is episode 100, I wanted to do something very different than I usually do. So I hit up my friend Mark, who is throwing NFT Seattle. I know you guys heard about NFT NYC, NFT LA, NFT like all the all the big events. There's gonna be one in Seattle, which is where I'm living right now. And so I rang up my friend Mark and I said, "Yo." Let me come into the studio. Let's do a pod. I haven't shot a pod in real life in a fucking long time. I've been doing virtual ones like you've seen. So this was an opportunity for me to test my skills and see if I could hold the same level of conversation and not shit myself, not get nervous, not to get the trembles, you know? I'm not like a big celebrator person, but since you guys were on this journey with me, a lot of you since the very beginning, I wanted to at least acknowledge it. So episode 100, check mark. Thank you so much for all the support. It's been so much fucking fun, but I'm not stopping anytime soon and as most of you know someone's got to dethrone joe rogan it's gonna be me it's gonna be us the joyish kingdom and it's gonna be a fucking show so today's conversation took place in a studio and it literally gave me a glimpse into what it might really be like in the future it was fucking awesome lock in that like button subscribe to the channel join the kingdom grab some fucking popcorn grab your favorite drink sit back relax and enjoy the conversation in the brand teachic house about a film podcast well we just filmed it but i'm pretending like this is the intro so about to film this. Mark's over there. He's about to get food, take a bath. We had a good time. This place is sick. A bath? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sick, yeah. Really? That's awesome. Completely decked out. Guys, welcome to the Joyous Kingdom. I'm Cage, your guide. I'll be replacing little voice inside your head for now, giving you a break from the constant terror monologue that is the human mind. I want to say, first thing you're listening to doing, on whatever platform you're on. If you haven't already, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel. Join the kingdom. Today I'm joined by Mark. It's going to be lit. And I'm work we're working with um, speakers that we've never tried before. So this is really exciting. I'm actually right. only worried about this thing scribing. Is that like a thing? You know yeah, what I mean? should be good. If is you, that not going to happen? Uh, well, well, I'm yeah, definitely going to, like, my fucking hair is no, going to no, hit it. Right. Like, this stuff, is it good? I think it'll be good. Cool. Right yeah, on. Yeah. Sweet. You're good, man. Right on. <laughs> well, guys, listen, this is, the, uh, this is the guy behind NFT Seattle. It's going to be fucking lit. How has that been recently? It's been a lot. It's been uh, it's been fun. So putting on a conference, didn't know how much work that was. <laughs> it's uh, it's coming together. Well, you, how long have you been doing exciting. it? How long have you been doing it? Like so setting I, it up. I bought the uh, I bought the domain for it end of last year. So probably like September October maybe, and had the idea. I didn't know that that was going to turn into running a conference. I was just mm. like, hey, surely there's going to be an NFT community out here in Seattle because there's one in L.A., Miami, New York, all these other places. And Seattle should be right up there with them with all the things we're doing. We're a tech hub, tech leader. So it was like, in my mind, it was going to happen. And I wasn't necessarily going to be the one to do it, but I was going to play some part in the community. So you, were then, you the first one with the idea? And you were like, let's fucking do this. I don't know if I was the first one with the idea, but I'm the one that did it. Damn, that's <laughs> fucking wild. And so, I mean, it's, so it's been an idea for, for a little over a year. Yeah. Um, been actively working on it since probably about February. True. And yeah. um, also he had told me, so this is before NFT... NF or sorry, NFT NYC. And after that, you told me, you're like, yeah, we're going to push this back because you talked to a few people or True. something. Yeah. And you were like, oh shit, we got something bigger than we thought <laughs> of potentially. You're like, shit, we're going to have to like book other people. And yeah. then you guys got, you guys got Frankie from uh, Subduck's founder who you guys know we love. And then you got Tom Bilyeu. Tom Bilyeu. That's fucking wild. Did you talk yeah. to him? Yeah. So Fuck. cool story behind Tom Bilyeu actually. So basically when we first had the idea of putting this event together, there was two people and we're like, man, if we could get one of these two people, that would be so dope. One of them was Gary Vee, who I actually met for the first time ever, like yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, six weeks ago, and talked to him about it. And, and he was like, he's like, actually, I've been looking for a reason to come to Seattle. Like, that would be dope. Let's see, email me. But he's a little too rich for my blood, so that didn't end up panning out. I heard it's um, really fucking expensive to get him to come to anything. He's, I mean, he's expensive, yeah, yeah for sure. Um, which he can be. He gets a million offers, to, so he can just, you know. And he's not really in the game to make money, but still mm -hmm. it has to make sense. And so... Um, but then, yeah, and so one was, one was Gary Vee, one was Tom Bilyeu. So first NFT I ever bought was Tom Bilyeu's NFT, so was Impact Theory Founder Ski. Which one did you get? Uh, so I, I've got a, there's a legendary and a heroic. I've got the heroic. Okay, and then and there's, there's a, a third one. Relentless, Relentless is the third one. Yeah, I yeah, had a few so. Relentless, and I got, I think, a one or two heroics. Yeah. Um, and then I believe I, I got out of the project only because I think they had run up a little bit. Yeah. And I was just like, I'll get, I'll get back in at some point. But then I was like, yo, I'm not going to buy another heroic. Like, I got to get a legendary yeah. if I'm going to get back in. I'm going to so buy a I'm legendary waiting on for it. sure. Yeah. Well, do you know what that comes with? Because I know that if you, it's like an access key, kind of like with mm -hmm. my NFTs, but yep. he's like way more higher up the ladder. So it's like way yeah. cooler to actually have access to him. Do you, are you able to like get on calls with them? Like there's not that many of them. Do you know what? So the, there's, there's some pretty consistent uh, calls that you can get access to like on a weekly basis where there's maybe there's 80 people. Mm -hmm. And so you can get called up and actually have conversation, ask questions, that kind of stuff with Tom. So you definitely get some access. Gotcha. Um, and then there's also like all the other things that he does, kind of like if you have a V1 of V friends, where it's just 
constantly building and adding more utility to it and they keep adding more stuff. So I don't really know and I don't pay that much attention. I just trust Tom and so I'm yeah, like, me too. okay, I get it. There's a lot like <laughs> I'm in and we'll see what comes with it. Yeah, exactly, know? dude. Yeah, so. that's the best way to do it, honestly. And especially in this bear market, we've, we've basically seen that unless the project founders got something up their sleeve or they're really smart or resourceful, yeah. they're basically like all fucked or they're just realizing that no matter what they do, it's not like working and they're just kind of like slowly fading. Like they're literally just fizzling out. And we're just watching like every single week, like another project just kind of eats to dust. And you're yeah. like, well, goodbye to that project. Goodbye to that project. What do you think about V friends though? I mean, I think, I wish I had a V friends. Well, I've got a V2. I just don't have, I just don't have any V1. Which one is wish it? I had a V1. I've got the, oh man, it's a leopard. leopard. Wait, Wait I want to look it's it up. It's a likable leopard. <laughs> I got to see what this one is. I've been, I've been scouring. I'm not going to buy anytime soon. I think like this market is going to get, if it's drag, if it's truly dragged on, like a few years potentially, which is like everybody is saying, I'm like, fuck yeah. it. If we're gonna be out for a few years, there's gonna be some massive, I assume there's gonna be some run ups for NFTs like inevitably when the market gets better and then we'll run up a little bit, but then we'll crash like super hard and have these like super bearish times where these like established projects won't even be exciting anymore. Yeah. Like VFriends Series 2 have been out for like a year and it's yeah. like, okay, like it's not that cool. So people like list it at like 0.1. That's what my thought process and like a V1 will be like one or two ETH. Like that's what, at least that's what I'm praying. I don't know if that's gonna yeah. happen. And I'm not trying to be like, yo, to, like, fuck clean the projects, up and, but yeah. I, wanna, I wanna clean them up. So tell me what, yeah, was, what sure. was the one you had again? A likable leopard. Likeable. I don't think there's any utility. I didn't mint it, so. Oh, you didn't? I think maybe you got like Uno, a set of Uno cards or something. I don't did know you, what the, Did you end up getting it? Because like, people are freaking out over that shit. It's I all didn't over. Get, I didn't get any like playing cards or anything. I just bought it on the Rip. secondary and. No, that might, I mean, is that maybe not? it's the likeable same animal, leopard? but I think there's more than one. So mine's a little different. Oh, this is that. book games, I think. Hold on. Oh, okay. Yeah, likeable, mine. wait, hold on, likeable leopard. Let me show you. Oh, it's a V2 though, right? Mine's V2. I'll, sh I'll show you the one I've two. got. This is my, that's my likable. Oh, that's leopard. fucking nice, dude. That is fucking nice. <laughs> show the, show the yeah, camera. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll probably just pop it up on screen it. too. Yeah. That's I can clean. Send you a screenshot of it or whatever. Yeah, that's a good one, dude. That's a really good one. I want to get one so bad. I want to get one so bad. Gary, Gary's a. Well, because I, I met Gary and I wanted to be able to, I was about to shoot him an email and I was like, well, I want to be able to tell him I'm a holder and I've been wanting to get yeah, one. You so have I was like, to, bro. I didn't want to be like, oh, I love your project. <laughs> that doesn't hold as much weight as I'm a holder. Bro, the motherfucker asks. Yeah. He's asked people on camera, like, how many V friends do you have? And I'm like, yo, I, I can't be having him, like, ro roasting right. like that on camera, especially if I don't even have a V2. Like, yeah. That's, like, almost, like, sad. V2's like, you didn't He's try. like, do you like me? I'm like, I fucking, <laughs> yeah, like, I do. It's just, like, I don't really yeah. want to, like, buy it. It's fucking expensive, dude. Um, yeah. But, yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, he made a fucking lot of money. And Gary V is someone, I, f I, I found him a long, long time ago. I never even, yeah. I didn't even know he was doing NFTs until way after his first collection. I don't understand because I was watching Gary, I was watching Tom, I was watching all of them in the summer. Yep. When when he dropped that project, I don't know how I missed it because it was literally sitting on the floor. I had enough money to buy it. And I mean, I remember um, there was even a point when when Bored Apes were at two ETH, I think, and yep. I was like, hmm. But I didn't even think about it. It wasn't like this will be the moon. Like this will be right. like my moonshot. I was just like, ah, eh, that's just another hyped up project. Like it would have been like any other hyped up project at that period in time. And so I just literally skipped over it and didn't buy any. But um, yeah. So your first one was which NFT you said? It was the Impact first Theory? First one was Impact Theory Founders Key, Tom Bilyeu. Nice, yep. very nice. Yeah, that's, that's the first a, one. That's a good NFT to get. It is a good NFT. Uh, yeah. And then yeah. you're also, so with NFT Seattle, I want to jump back into that. So NFT yeah. Seattle, is that going to be conference-based? Is it going to, because New York City, like, kind of bombed it. It was like, I didn't go to anything in NFT because everyone told me they're like, don't even bother. Like, don't even try and sneak yeah. in level of just out, just atrocious. And I was like, what the fuck happened? So what are you guys going to do this different than NFT NYC? Yeah, I mean, so for NFT NYC, to their credit, I will say, I mean, it, depending on who you ask, some people said it was like epic and amazing. And some people said it was trash, you know, so okay. it depends. I mean, the conference specifically. I think, yeah, I, I think if you went to just go like network and party and meet people and go to all the activations for different projects, then it was dope. You got yeah. to go to some cool parties. You're hanging out good. with Madonna and Blondish and whoever <laughs> else, you know, like. That's sick. If you went as a speaker and you're trying to speak to a bunch of people and you're really like, you're flying in on your own dime to go speak at this conference, then you go and there's like three people in the audience who are the speakers waiting to speak after you and nobody's there, then that's kind of a bummer, you know? True. So yeah. I think depending on like, yeah, who you ask, you get a different response. So for us, it's not gonna be as like chaotic for lack of a better term. Um, their whole goal is to get as many people on stage that they can showcase as possible. For us, we're really doing like one main day of conference. We're doing a little bit on the second day of conference. When I say conference, that's like a panel or a fireside chat or a speaker on stage delivering value. Mm -hmm. And then, the, so day one is gonna be a bunch of fireside chats and panels. There's gonna be the, the sponsor expo with like activations and that kind of thing. And then day two, there's gonna be a couple of panels but more community driven satellite events. Okay. But all that stuff is like part of the conference and baked into it. It's not like, the fun things you want to go to are not part of the conference. Like it's all one. 
Okay. You know, and there's only one stage. So if you're the speaker, like you got at it. that time, it's not like, oh, where's the speaker at? Right. Where do I go? Which, which stage is he at? It's like, there's one stage. That's cool. You I actually, that's, that's probably really good. When I talked to, um, I did a podcast with the V Friends Discord mod and he worked at uh, VCon. And I asked him like, what kind of sucked about VCon in a sense? Like, what could they have done better? Yeah. And he's like, well, we had like multiple stages and a lot of stuff happening at once but no one knew quite what was happening. So yeah. it was just a whole lot of like, what's going on over there? They're like, I don't know. Then they hear Gary like yelling over here. They're like, wait, wait, Gary V's over here. And then there's like a line over here. That's and there's funny. a whole lot of stuff going. So yeah. I mean, also Seattle's just like, at least from my experience, I, I've only been here for a little bit. And honestly, like I'm inside more than I'm outside, but it seems a little bit more relaxed than New York. It's like definitely more techie, like you're saying. Yeah. Um, but I get like, not, not quite stoner vibes. I wouldn't say I get stoner vibes from Seattle. It's just way more like just slow. I don't know if that makes sense. What's the vibe I for mean, Seattle, do you think? Hustle and bustle is like New York City is definitely that way. Yeah. Right? Whereas out here, people are kind of in there. People are just a bit more reserved here. I think mm. I think that's what it is. You know, that's probably true. That's probably true. But you've been here for a fucking long time, right? Yeah. I've been in here Seattle. eight years now. Do you ever uh, think about leaving or do you think you're in China? I don't know. I'm not necessarily like locked in forever, but I like it here. Well, what, would be, what would be the place that someone pays? He's like, hey, man, we, we want to <laughs> take you. We need we need you to be mobile. Where do you want to go that you'd be like, all right, let's go. Sarasota, Florida. Florida? Yeah, dude. Just because it's so warm there. It's like just temperature perfect, and stuff. Man. I love I love the warm water. Like in the West Coast, you get in the ocean and it's cold. Yeah. East Coast, you True. get I mean, if you're if you're down in the in Florida, you get on the coast, Gulf side, and it's just warm. I That's love that. That's true. I didn't even you know? think about that. Yeah. I like the I like the warm weather. T- you know, here it gets warm for a couple weeks, but in Florida you get a lot more warmth. You have to deal with a lot of humidity and some <laughs> bugs, and you know, it's not perfect, but Dude, I, I, I know Florida. I'm fucking, when I moved to Seattle, like, I, I'm ready for the winter because I just want to experience it just as I have. But I'm telling you, I was built, I was built for the cold because like I'm here in <laughs> Seattle. He just says it was only warm for a little bit, but bro, it's like too warm. Like, I, I'm not kidding you. Like, I, I think my body temperature is always hot or something, which I'm wearing a hoodie right now because it's just like comfortable. But like most yeah. of the time I'm hot, right? And it's so, like, even when it's here and it's like 80 degrees. Yeah. Like that's about as hot as it gets, right? 85, something like that. Yeah. And well, I'm walking around Especially like, when you don't have air conditioning here, then it's. Do you not have air conditioning? My house does not have air conditioning. What the f- Does your apartment? Well, I like bought one because okay, I fucking yeah. wanted an AC. Like, do you not want AC? <laughs> I don't have Are AC. Are you not hot when it's hot outside? See, it's like you need it for about a week. I, okay, I guess. I, I operate, like I have my hoodie on all the time when I'm doing this, yeah. when I'm doing anything. It's like I always like being cold so I can just like bundle up. Like gotcha. I always, like, this yeah. is the first time y'all see my legs because I always have a blanket on and then like my camera is always cuts off here usually because <laughs> my desk is here. But I'm always, always in like... full body shot today. Yeah, I got, yeah, this is a full giving body the, shot. Giving the ladies what they want. Dude, fuck, like, this fucking cast, this quad. But yeah, I'm there usually you know. wrapped up in sweatpants and stuff. Cause yeah. I, just, I don't know what it is. Like I, I really think I'm going to have to move to Alaska or something. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. But what do you think? Like, I'm about to go into the winter. Am I going to change my mind? I mean, in the winter, it doesn't get super cold here necessarily. It's just like really gray. So it gets really oh. overcast over here. But it's, it's nice. I mean, so for me, you moved from where? Colorado? Yeah, but I was only there for like a year. I was in Charles, okay. South Carolina for like most of my life. So it was okay. hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it didn't really get cold there. So I moved from Ohio, which isn't that cold, but cold enough for me to like the, I remember the, the year before I moved here. So 2013, mm-hmm. I guess, that winter. It was like, you couldn't go anywhere and buy a shovel. You couldn't go anywhere and buy salt. Like I had to park about a block away from my house in this cul-de-sac because there was so much snow banked up that you couldn't park anywhere. And it, you know, it was like, it was disaster. And I I do not like the cold. Yeah. (laughs) So that's normally, it's not that bad, but it was like the whitest ever, like the biggest snowstorm they'd ever had. And then I moved from there to here. Everybody's complaining about winter, but it's like 40 degrees and gray. And I'm like, yo, this is great. That's so Compared weird. to Ohio, like, come oh, on. Okay. I thought it was going to be super snowy here. And I was interested yeah. in what it would be like in the city. Uh, I guess that's because when I was here last August, it wasn't snowy in Washington anymore because it was the summer. But when I went to like Olympic National Park, it was like straight up yeah. snow everywhere. And I was, that was wild to me seeing that. Like, I love, like, when it, I think it's, it's in Mount Rainier that you can see, like, yeah. in the distance. That's Dude, the that shit one. is so fucking beautiful. It never gets old either, right? My yeah, God. It's so, it so beautiful. Um, you know what I want to hear? I want to hear the story behind Joyage. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what we were going to talk about in the beginning. So, yeah, Joyage Kingdom. Uh, you guys see it everywhere. We got the stickers. Yeah, you got the stickers. Do you think I can pull this off? I don't know if I'm going to look as good as you. Yeah, yeah, put it back on. Let's see what it looks like. Get like a cropped in zoom shot. Yeah, the Joyish Kingdom baby. Joyish everywhere. I I wear it everywhere. Um, I think in my head, I just, or just growing up, I always wanted to have my own brand. And what's interesting is you just brought up Ohio because Logan Paul's from Ohio. Yeah. Who's like one of the people that I never, I never really looked up to him as like a hero. But as far as like a pioneer breaking through, doing like really wild shit, like the fact that he's in the W or in the um, 
what's it called? The fucking wrestling, whatever the yeah, wrestling WWE thing is. Yeah, WWE. Whatever. Yeah. And then he like box Floyd Mayweather, all these crazy things that you're just like, that should not be happening. <laughs> he's like out there and they're just like fucking around. They're just doing it. And I'm like, wait, so like what's possible again? And, yeah, so, and then right? he's like, he's always wearing his Maverick clothes. And I remember being like, that's badass to be able to wear your own clothes all the time. Yeah. And so when I had the joys, so joys originally came from uh, photography. So I did photography for a while. Okay. I needed a website just for my normal portfolio. So I made the website. I needed a word and I liked Voyage. But then I was like, I can't, the Voyage is definitely trademarked. And I was like, yeah. so Voyage doesn't work. And I was like, okay, let me just combine a couple words. So I ended up combining Joy with Voyage, thinking it was really lame for about six months because I just was like, I just took two words and combined that. I used to make yeah. fun of people for that. And then um, other people liked it. And I was like, okay, maybe it's not so bad. So after I got over <laughs> the insecurity, when I realized it wasn't as bad as I thought That's it funny. was, I just rolled with it. It was my website name for a long time. And then when I did the podcast in February of last year, when I first started it, I was like, okay, fire, Joy's podcast. We'll just roll yeah. with Joy's. That, that's fine. And after a while, it began to have the brand of like doing your own thing. Because that's right when I was um, started the podcast, decided I'm going to quit my job in a few months and travel the world, living in my car and stuff. Yeah. And so it was like this big journey of self-discovery kind of thing. So Joy didn't be like perfect. It was right. like my tattoo. I have a tattoo Voyage, on my arm. Joy, I love that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And my tattoo on my arm, I used to pretend that it meant something. And then after a few years, it started to like have value. And then I started like link stuff. It was okay, like here's now what it means. And so it was kind of with Joy Age. Like it didn't start with anything. Yeah. Um, and then it became Utility something. came later. Yeah. Like, so, Added the utility after the fact. Facts. You ever going to drop an NFT collection? I actually, so I had an idea for one. Um, this is actually a funny story. So long story short, last year I got my first tattoo. Okay. Sure. And I had this idea for an NFT collection that I wanted to do. I didn't know what the artwork was going to be. And then I got this tattoo. It's French toast. <laughs> His name is Pierre. How big is he? And it? he's like about, about yay, <laughs> yay big right there. Oh my God. Um, and I was, I was working out with my buddy Matt one day at the gym. This is probably like November, December. And I was talking about like, yeah, I'm trying to come up with like what the artwork is going to be for this project. I had all these ideas. And I, I had the, the weights. I dropped them right here. And one of them landed right there on my, on my tattoo. And he was like, dude, careful, you're going to smash the breakfast buddy down there. And I was like, oh my God, I was that's... like, breakfast buddies. I was like, kind of like that. And so I started working on breakfast buddies, but that was before I decided that I was going to actually put together NFT Seattle. Okay. And then you can only do so many things yeah. at once, True. you know? And so it was probably, and I was helping another friend, my, my buddy Lennox, who actually I partnered with to put together NFT Seattle. Um, I was helping him launch a project called Satoshi's Index. So I was helping out with the marketing for that. I think I heard about we were that working one. on that project. And then I had this other one, but then I decided to launch this conference. And that's what, okay, like something's got to give. And so I just pressed pause on the NFT. And sure. I was like, I'm going to build all these relationships and learn so much. And that's like more valuable. That'll make me way better and add way more value to anybody that actually buys this when, yeah. I, when the time is right. So I pressed pause on that. But at some point, I would like to launch one. Yeah. And plus, for NFTs almost, if you launch during the gambling phase of what NFTs are, you, you are almost inevitably going to face the FUD of like, what is like what is this project what the fuck and they're just going to sell like that's almost like inevitable yeah. almost every project out there right now so it almost makes better sense like the positive you get the pros you get is you likely will be able to sell out and make a few million dollars in the beginning some kind of bag well maybe not now but like if you had taken the nft opportunity sure. yeah. during the board you could have made a huge bag um but the offside is that like is at some point you're going to probably get called a rug puller or you're going to probably get a bunch of uh hate towards you yeah. but if you wait and you don't really take advantage of like the gambling side, so you don't really have like probably the opportunity to make two million dollars right off the bat, which honestly like isn't even like a thing for anywhere else in the entire world except for this industry. Yeah. Right. And so for me, it made better sense. Like, let me just wait because my project is more based around support of a creator. Mm -hmm. And they're like, I think if you're gonna get bigger and you're like on TV one day, your little small NFT collection will be worth so much more. So I don't want to make anything like bigger than that because right now it's just that, and so people aren't like expecting anything. Yeah. But if I dropped a five thousand collection of fucking whatever, like French toast or something like that, like <laughs> yeah. in the very beginning, yeah. then it like, it almost kills me like before I can start, I guess is the way yeah. I look at it. So like for you, you're a little bit older than me, I think, right? You're, how old are you? 33. 33, so you're yeah. 33, but like you are arguably about to head into your prime or in your prime right now at 33, right? I feel like we're just gonna keep getting better, dude. Keep getting better? You know? Do you, so you don't feel, like right now, do you feel like this is prime or I'm coming on prime for yourself? Or are you like, no, I'm actually gonna hit prime in a few years? Or are you just like, like, like every year? I think I just keep getting better. Fire. That's the goal. Well, I don't fucking know. Dude. I don't want to hit like a that. point where it's like, oh man, all downhill from here. Like that sucks. <laughs> you know what That's I mean? True. Like I don't want, I don't want that. I hope I never say that. True. You know? So the vision is that like, I feel like you should keep getting better. You keep learning more stuff, meeting better people, like leveling up as a human. Like, yeah, you're not in your prime physically. Maybe, you know, it's going to be harder to get a six pack when you're 45 true. or when you're 35, but 
Not if you got that TRT, bro. I mean, it's I don't have a six pack right now either, <laughs> but um, but I hopefully yeah, you just get keep getting better. Well, you know that sounds like it's common sense, and for me, it's like yeah, I'm like right there with you. But I actually don't get that answer most of the time. Like, a lot of people have like these preconceived notions of what it's going to be like at a certain point in their life. They don't hit it, they're upset, or if they're not on their way on a certain way, they I don't know they. Not that they curl up in a ball and kind of just like roll over, but sometimes I've gotten yeah. that sense, and I don't meet entrepreneurs that often, like a full bread. Like you're out here putting in the fucking work. Like you're putting. You, have you done any like crazy, um, like super high risk things where you literally were like, if this doesn't work, I'm fucked. I can't like pay rent kind of thing, or I'm gonna be kicked out of this apartment <laughs> or whatever it is. Um, I would say the closest thing to that is probably. I mean, NFT Seattle's kind of been that way. You know, not yeah. not like I'm not like I'm not going to be able to pay rent or whatever, but like that's scary, bro. I mean, <laughs> you put down all these deposits and like we had zero sponsors, zero tickets sold. We're just like going on a dream and putting down deposits on all these things and whatnot. I mean, obviously we pushed back the date and have a little bit more time than the original time, but yeah. having never put on a conference before, like that's kind of risky, you know. And it's actually it's kind of funny because there's like some DJs in the community that are like, oh, this is just some Web two dude just trying to <laughs> do a big cash grab, and I'm like, dude. If you knew like what I'm doing, like I'm putting all this money to do something for the community, you know? Yeah. Um, but I would say, I mean, that's, that's the, the closest thing to, I haven't, I haven't done anything that's like crazy risky. I mean, I moved out here not knowing anybody, but I had a job at that point that wasn't True. like super risky. It was just more like, didn't know anybody. Let's see what happens. And, you know, a chance to reinvent yourself. But yeah. Um, yeah. I feel like NFT Seattle has been probably the riskiest business move that. Dude, that's fucking scary. Yeah, it is. It's really scary. And it's very like visible you know what i mean like you start building a relationship with somebody like tom and then he's coming to the, you're like we got to deliver <laughs> yeah, you know what dude. i mean um, so it's i mean it's super fun it's like adrenaline for sure and there's so much work that goes into it but it is really fun yeah um and i know i, I would say my thought process around it too because so lennox i mean he and i both are like love the whole web3 nft space and the community and everything you know in in the whole like ecosystem like the ethos of all of it and so really wanting to like add value to the community build the community meet all the people that kind of stuff and so like that's kind of the motivation going into it and we're both just problem solvers and entrepreneurs and we figure it out and enjoy hard things and challenges but you look at his background he's like dude i've never hosted as much as dinner party <laughs> <laughs> and i've i've hosted some events maybe Holy like shit. 100 200 people yeah. in terms of like a happy hour or something like True. that or <clears throat> Back when I was in the corporate world, I would do these big events for like our clients. We would do a dinner and maybe have one or two people get up and say something, but more like an award ceremony than like an actual conference, right? So if you look at our background, like we're not qualified, but who's like qualified and ready to like take big risks and do big things? Like Jeff Bezos wasn't qualified to like build Amazon. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. And you think about like the people that launched Board Ape Yacht Club, were they qualified to do like, no, you just got to put yourself out there and go for it. And to me, it was like, man, if I actually like, commit to this and build this and put this together, I'm gonna to be so proud of myself for pulling this off versus what's the alternative? I could have this great idea, this vision and be like, I don't know if I can pull it off. That's kind of risky. That's a little scary. I'm gonna not do it. It's like, no, like when you, when you look at it in a binary fashion like that, it's like, okay, I could take the safe route, pull back and not do it. Or I could take the risk and yeah, I've got something to lose, but like, that's exciting. If I yeah. pull this off, like I'm gonna be so freaking proud of myself and I'm <laughs> gonna be like, hell yeah. like. So I was, even this morning, I'm like visualizing, like, what's it going to be like? Like you introduce Tom, Tom comes yeah. on stage, he rocks it. Everybody's like, dude, that was amazing. I got so much from that. And I'm like, it's going to feel so good by like doing, and it's not about me. It's like about the community, right? Like it's not like the Mark show, but I'm not speaking or anything. Like I'm introducing Tom. That's about all I'll do. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I'll like moderate a panel. I don't know. But you, it's should, like, you should do a moderate. That'd be fun. Yeah. yeah I, might, I might moderate the community panel. I think yeah, you should like do that. Like community building. That'd be cool. Um, I'm excited to intro Tom. I am going to do that. But no, do you have like um, a planned out thing for that? Not yet. No. I mean, I'll probably tell a little bit of the story how he was, he was my first NFT, Lennox, my partner, it was his first NFT. So as business partners putting this event together and it was like both actually, so I bought that, I posted it on my Instagram story and I was like, Hey, is anybody else doing this NFT thing? Lennox responded. He's like, yo, I invested a bunch into that project. What's up? Wow. I was okay. like, dude, no way. So the whole reason Lennox and I even started talking about web three was because of impact theory, Tom Billy, So the fact that he's our keynote, Wow. It's kind yeah. of poetic, you know? That's fucking clutch right there. To yeah. Especially to have that story. Like, I have, a, I have a similar thing with, like, a few different people. If I ever meet them, I'll have, like, a quick story that I have about them. Like, with Gary V, how I, like, fucked up my chance to, like, get in front of him. <laughs> I'd done this podcast yeah. with someone and had yeah. a chance to, like, get the video right in front of Gary and just, like, completely goofed it. So, yeah. But it's kind of funny because I'll be able to tell that story. Like, that's going to be great because he's going to instantly come in 
it's like feeling good because she's like, yo, I'm I like making an impact just by being here and having met yeah. this dude. So that's yeah. gonna be lit. Yeah, that's gonna be really. So cool. I'll probably tell I'll probably tell that story. You yeah. should, you definitely should. It's actually it's cool because he's so he's from Tacoma, so mm-hmm. his mom hardly ever gets to hear him speak. Um, oh fuck yeah, dude. And she's actually gonna get to go, so she's really excited oh. to hear him speak. And his team is awesome. Like getting to meet the whole team behind Impact Theory and what they're doing. It's like I have even more respect for him than I did. You know, and I had a lot of respect for him before. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's probably got a full team. I never even thought about it because he's so like chill. He's like almost too chill. Where <laughs> I'm really like, chill. I would almost, I would not even be surprised if he was like, I don't have an assistant. Like it's just me doing everything. <laughs> yeah. I'd have been like, yeah, makes, makes sense. sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's a cool dude. Funny. Yeah. If you, but if you pull off NFT Seattle, bro, that'll be late. And the, one, that'll just you'll be you'll have cemented credibility in this space. Like there's so much upside. And I guess yeah. that's like that's a good point for entrepreneurships too. Uh, or entrepreneurs when you have like an opportunity where you're like yo there's a lot Just of to, upside and we're gonna we are gonna pull it off at this point it's not an if it's like Fuck we're yeah. gonna pull it off it's gonna happen you know you're and you're there close was, to there was really like good. early on it was like are we are we doing this you know? <laughs> like we're putting stuff out there like we're talking about it but like is this yeah. actually gonna happen but like this it's definitely happening when you told point, me you know? how far ahead were you into that process i mean we we're committed to doing it okay you know yeah i mean there's always i feel like every step along the way there's like there's, you question yourself, I feel like, a lot of times. You know, yeah. I think that's natural, but, um, but yeah, we're doing this. Yeah, I mean, if, yeah. with, like, all these NFT projects, I'm just thinking about all the ones that have pushed off their mint because they just, like, they're, like, ready. You're so hyped up. Then they're like, oh, the market's <laughs> not, like, quite as good. So they just push it off yeah. and push it off. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm seeing – like, what, what, what mistakes are you saying? Jesus Christ, I was thinking this. What mistakes are you seeing from these NFT projects? Because not all of them mm-hmm. are entrepreneurs, clearly. Like, when you see how they run, you're yeah. like, Wow if this runs is just because of speculation, you know? Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people over, over promise and under deliver versus like under promise over deliver. Mm. There's a lot of, a lot of hype and people just like not actually having something that's crazy unique and trying to sell it really high. And the goal is not to sell out a project, right? Like if you, if you have a business, the goal is not to like have a big launch day, right? Like that's just the beginning, you know? So, Slow mint, fast mint, sell out day one, whatever. It doesn't really matter. The goal is to like build, it's a company, you know? So I think people just haven't, it's, it's kind of funny, I think, when people say, wow, this is so different than web two because you have to actually like take care of your community and you have to actually add value and you have to actually like, I'm like none of that's different, yeah. you know? It's just the barrier to start a company, basically, because when you launch an NFT project, that's what it is. The barrier to entry is so much lower that anybody can start a company and so they're learning all these things that they maybe never would have learned before, which is awesome. Like, that's beautiful. Um, but it's not necessarily different in a lot of ways than Web2. Like, it just takes a lot of freaking work. So there's yeah. a lot of people that aren't prepared for that, that maybe don't know that. And so they're wearing their rose-colored glasses thinking, man, this is going to be so freaking, I'm going to make millions, you know? Launch Bro, this project, sell out, like, boom. Call me out from September 2021. 20, <laughs> I literally thought I was going to be at 100,000 subscribers by my birthday. My birthday passed a month ago, and yeah. I'm not anywhere near 100,000 subscribers. Because in the bull run of Euphoria, we literally all thought this is it. Like I, I don't know when you got yeah. into NFTs, but I literally was like, if you if you were off by a month, you're you missed the entire bull. Like Bordy Belkov was going to be at like a thousand ETH flow. Like people really thought yeah. in that stage, like we were literally going to go and never come back, and then we crash. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. When did you get in though? Let's see. First one I got was like September October. Okay, September October of uh, of. Because he dropped Impact yeah. Theory around that time then. Yep. Okay, fire, right on, right on. Um, I was gonna say, with the Web3 space, I, we were just talking about this off camera before, but I'm like super heavy involved in Web3 Twitter. Like I guess NFT oh, yeah. degenerate Twitter, I'm deep in that because there's so much easy content to make there and it's yeah. fucking entertaining. That's where you get all your ideas from. Yeah, how, much, how yeah. involved are you there? I'm pretty active on Twitter. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I've been managing the NFT Seattle one, so mm-hmm. it's like between that and my own. True. Um, I didn't use Twitter, I mean, I think I, I've had Twitter since like 2011 or something. Like I've had it forever, mm. but I had probably put out like 30 tweets yeah, total until did. 2021. So in 10 years, yeah. it was like, you know, three tweets a year on average. And uh, so I think I, I made a post on, I posted a tweet probably in like July of 2021. And I was like, all right, here's my annual tweet. Just saying what's up. <laughs> and then I shut it off and probably deleted the app. <laughs> Little Dude. did I know, like a month later, I was like, yo, Twitter's where it's at. And I was going to be diving deep into it. So, Dude, Twitter, I don't think any, I've, I still don't know 
Honestly, I'm so dialed into like the specific algorithms I'm in, like on TikTok and Twitter. Yeah. I'll be scrolling and I'm like, there's nothing else going on on, on this planet other than <laughs> what I'm seeing. Confirmation bias. Just exactly. You what you want. Like if yeah. people aren't talking NFTs, I don't know what you're talking about. Like I just don't, yeah. I don't even know. Like I'm so wrapped up in this. Like I'm sure you have a little yeah. bit of this because you're wrapped up in the entrepreneur world and then yeah. also NFT world. Yeah. But like I don't, and I also don't know if you're like you're in a relationship, but like dating is like almost weird now because I'm just like, they're almost in a different reality than I'm in because yeah. I'm in this little weird bubble. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it's like, you know, Web3, NFT. And they're like, what do you mean Web3? I'm like, okay. Yeah. There's NFTs? no way. Yeah. They're like, oh, I've heard of that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's just, I mean, I, I mean, I would say for me, that's not like my, I'm, that's not my entire world, right? Like I was just, I was at an event this last weekend where it was, it was all marketing, like marketing agencies, marketing agency owners. And so I was networking with, you know, maybe 50 people and varying levels of success and business size and whatnot. And there was a couple of people there that I connected with about NFTs, but we didn't really, like that wasn't really a topic of conversation. Mm. A lot of it was around like marketing and business and how do you scale a company, scale an agency and that kind of stuff. So I'm, de- I'm not like, it's not that I'm not all in, but it's just like I've got different things going on that are not all Web3, True. right? So I've got maybe a little bit broader perspective. Yeah. Um, but it is interesting when, like I, I deal with the same thing, where that's like, especially on Twitter for sure. Mm. That's what I use Twitter for is like NFTs, Web3, Twitter, like that's why mm-hmm. I'm there. Yeah, you know, so that's true. Yeah. yeah, yeah. With um, honestly, I'm in like a weird, like almost in between world because like I don't much like going to events like social, uh, like Bitcoin Miami, for example. Like someone, yeah. had, I forget who had asked me, and it was some other content creator. They're like, yeah, we have like a yacht. Like we'll be able to get you on. All you have to do is show up. And I literally was just like, ah, I don't want to go. You there. didn't want to go on a yacht? I don't. I don't know. Well, I mean, it's like <laughs> fine, I guess. But it's like I've, I've done, I've done like a bunch of things similar to that. Like if you were to be like. Uh, I want to. I want to live. I want to be a van lifer. Like I've tried that. Oh, yeah. I've, done, I've done all the things that people are like. That would be so cool. Yeah. So to me, I know when I get to the yacht, I'm going to be on there and just be like, "All right, it wasn't that cool as I thought it was going to yeah. be." So I, I've, I guess yeah. I've done that before. So for me, it wasn't so much for that. But also, like when I get there to these like networking events specifically, like the last one I went to was probably NFT um, museum that we both saw each other there. Briefly. Oh yeah, right. Um, but I don't like going to those things. I don't know what it is because I, I yeah. don't know like what to say when I get there. Like I went to the one where you, where I first met you, I think yeah. it was at the yeah, NFT yeah. Seattle or uh, like Seattle Social Fremont, Club. I think. Yeah. And I went there and that, that yeah. was cool, but I, I probably only met like you and like maybe one other person that I still even yeah. talk to at all. I guess like those Rustin events. was there or somebody. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Russ, I guess, you know, it's actually not so bad. Now I think about it. I went to one event met like four people. It's actually pretty good. That's pretty good. Do you like those events? Like networking I'm events a, like I that? I mean, I do. It's weird though. Like I'm I get an there extrovert. And, you know okay. what I mean? Like there's, I kind of fight it and it just takes time to like, you know, especially out in Fremont or whatever, like you drive for an hour, you get there, you know, True. but that being said, like once I get there and I'm around people and I kind of light up and I'm in a good mood, like yeah. if I'm around people, I'm feeling pretty good and I enjoy <laughs> it. So you, I fight myself getting there Yeah. and then, but once I get there and I show up and there's people there, then I'm like. Yo, this is awesome. What's up? Yeah, that's that's so. actually probably true. Yeah, I, th- I guess I probably just get anxiety before. I'm like, oh, like, I don't know if I want to go to do this. Like, maybe I shouldn't. It's like waste my time, especially because I'm in content. Yeah. So like, it's not the, like the business people I can kind of relate to, but like not that much. Like honestly, so I'm actually excited to talk about the business side um, because you also have like a thing that's separate from what it's still involved with Web three, but like honestly, not that much, I guess, right? Because yeah. it's all it's mainly digital marketing that you work with, um, which is where we're at right now. We're in like a we're in, like a whole ass fucking situation like this is dope there's like rooms everywhere we're in a whole set right here like i'm used to filming <laughs> my room so this is crazy but you're this is yeah. called brand tjic right is brand-tegic, that how you say it? Yeah. tell me about that yeah so before i tell you about brand tjic i was just thinking about the networking thing i think i like it depending on the quality of the people there because mm. you can you can show up to an event and sometimes you go to an event and there's just a bunch of people that are like talking or just trying to be seen or it's very imagey or whatever and it's like i don't really need that you know sure but sometimes you go and there's people that are like building that are actually doing it and you pick up some alpha or you just like True. make some connections where you're like, yo, this person, this is a real one. Like we're going to connect or, you know, so I think depending on the caliber of the people at an event, that makes it worth it or not worth it for the right event. Like I, one, of, one of the NFTs that I bought was leveling up NFT by Eric Sue. So he's a marketing yeah, agency yeah. guy too. Okay. Um, him and Neil Patel, Neil Patel and him, they've got a podcast together and all this stuff, but he's deep into web three and so I bought this NFT. It was probably the most expensive NFT I've actually ever bought. It was like 4,500 bucks. So it was like, I think it was 1.5 ETH mm-hmm. is what I bought it for. And, but it gave you access to this event where like Sam Parr spoke. He's the guy who started the hustle. Mm-hmm. If you're familiar with that. Um, Vanessa Lau, who's a huge content creator. You probably know her, YouTuber. I, pro- I probably do. I'm not horrible with names. Yeah. I'm sure if I saw She's a massive her. YouTuber. Um, she just hit 600,000 subscribers today, actually. Um, right. 
but she, so like people like that became a friend, like Eric became a friend, all these different people that are like super high caliber. And I paid $4,500 to go to that networking <laughs> event, basically like, yeah, I got an NFT oh for it. Um, but the whole point was like, I want to get access to these people that I can learn from. And I've t- talked to Eric a number of times since then and Vanessa and nice. it's like, Is it worth it? that's really valuable, you know? So I like to be in the right kind of rooms if you go and it's, you know, not that it always has to be that level of people, but um, I find a lot of value in that. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, back to Brain TJ. Let's do it. Um, yeah, so we, we create a lot of like social first content, a lot of video content. So, for example, right now, TikToks are really hot. You know a thing or two about that. <laughs> Reels, like short form video content, yeah. that's a big part of our focus. Shout out TikTok. Uh, so, we, if you're not following, obviously, if you're watching this, you're following Cade, but if you're not, yeah, follow, follow I Cade. I have all the Join links Kingdom. down below. Links below. Um, <laughs> like, comment, subscribe, do it all. Turn on the notifications, click the bell. You know, you know what it is. Fire. So <laughs> we, uh, yeah, so we create social first content, short form video content, it's a big focus of ours. We do some big projects. Like what we're on right now is actually a big set that we created for Talking Rain, like the sparkling ice drinks. Mm. So we did a, a big shoot for them. Um, so we, we create a lot of like photo, video, graphic design content for companies. We create social media strategies and execute on that, like post and captions and copywriting all that stuff too yeah how long yeah. did you how long into that journey did you come because i that's actually part of the reason i like buffered my intro because i was like i'm trying like i didn't know your exact uh role with it i didn't want to fuck yeah. up in the very beginning like what yeah, is your yeah. role you walk into the room you got coffee in your hand like what's the first move <laughs> that's funny so my official title is head of social media okay um the story so i actually i had an idea for this kind of like a i guess an agency but i was doing outbound i was doing sales and I had relationships, I was growing the footprint actually for Capital One within the automotive industry. And I had relationships with all these car dealerships in Washington and they were all just sales, 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 zero branding, zero marketing. I was like, man, these guys suck at this marketing <laughs> thing. Their social medias were all trash. And so I was like, man, I could really help them level up. I already have the relationships. So Austin had just started Brandtegic and I hit him up and I was like, I was like, yo, I've got an idea. I want to run this by you. So we wanted to run and I was kind of telling him what I was thinking about doing, just basically doing something real similar on the side. He was doing it more towards real estate and I was going to do the same thing for automotive. Mm. And uh, he's like, dude, just join me and let's build this together. And so that was three years ago. That was summer of 2019. So about, about three years ago. It's like a dream scenario, bro. Um, like you yeah. think about something, you have an idea, you pitch to someone, you're like, let's fucking do this. Yeah, That's crazy. That's crazy. And so we've been, and now we've got, I think we've got 18 full-time employees now. Um, and so, yeah, that's... Uh, that's the story. I mean, we, at the time we were just working out of his apartment, my apartment, coffee shop, whatever. So that happened for another year, year and a half. I, ended, I quit my job, um, quit the corporate world, January 1, 2020, a couple months before COVID. Nice. He and I actually got a place together and then our living room was <laughs> the office. Lit. And then, how much money did you guys take out by the way? Like how did that work in the very beginning? But like if you guys were profitable at all, would you guys just like Go back in as you use some of it, you'd like reinvest in stuff. So or? everything everything has been bootstrapped. So we didn't take any investor money. Everything was mm-hmm. like going back into the to the business for them. I mean, I like we we're paying ourselves, you sure. know, what we can, but it wasn't like wasn't like making insane amounts of money and like not putting money back in. Like with no investor, no outside capital, it was all pretty much like it's all been bootstrapped up to this yeah. point. Yeah. In the beginning were you so. doing in person stuff? Uh, we did until, I mean, we did a lot of in-person stuff, even like sales calls, almost all of our sales meetings and stuff were even in person. Like we'd show up oh, in somebody's guys, office. Really? Yeah. Shit. Now that almost all happens over zoom. Mm-hmm. And then a challenge, like I remember when COVID first hit and we're like, yo, we're doing photos in person, video content in person. All the stuff we were doing was in person. Right. So there was a moment where we're like, is this whole thing going to fall apart? Like, yeah. <laughs> our, we can't even like go into our client's office. All yeah. the offices are shut down. You know, Fuck. people, people don't want us to go into their house. What are we going to do? So yeah, we, we hit up all of our clients. We're like, hey, what, how can we serve you? Like, what are you guys going through? We can meet somewhere. We can just stay six feet apart, whatever. Just trying to figure out what are the guidelines? What can we do? What can't we do? Um, but during that time, I mean, a, a lot of people pulled back. A lot of people leaned into it. The people that leaned in were definitely the people that emerged and like came out really well, yeah. us included. I think by the end of, I say the end of COVID. When did COVID end? I don't know. It's like been a blurred line this Bro, whole time. It's, it's literally Depending like... Depending on who you ask, they're like, it never ended. It's, it's still like here. back, dude. It's like, there's like another one actually now. There's like a monkey one. I'm like... <laughs> I don't know. Oh, fuck yeah. again? <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm not doing that again. But anyways, um, that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> so we... Uh, but by the, by the end of... I'll just say by the end of 2020, we probably had 12, 15 team members. Mm. So in a year when COVID happened and a lot of businesses were like shutting down where are your eyeballs? They're not in person anymore. Now everybody's on social media even more. 
And so creating content mm -hmm. for people, it ended up being really good for our business. We grew quite a bit during that time. Yeah, I was gonna say, a lot of the tech people grew fucking head. Like they just so well. I mean, I even yeah. did like, like when Zoom. I had the YouTube. Yeah. yeah, like everything was online. Like people didn't, yeah. it was actually crazy like how much was happening like online. I mean, even like like the Dogecoin, the memes that you guys remember from the, from the very beginning, like those came yeah. because people were fucking bored at home. Like yeah. it's still happening from time to time. That's true. But like crazy shit, like the fact that Dogecoin literally got and is still in, I think the top 20, that's fucking like that's weird. Wild. That's like super weird actually. <laughs> like there's weird. there's so many hundreds yeah. and thousands of coins out there and almost all of them crashed to zero. Like top G, I got in the beginning, wrote it up and it literally has gone straight to zero. And like yeah. every single shit coin does that. And somehow Doge just emerged in like ones. So like there's some people who just like won like the UFC crushed it throughout the entire uh, COVID-19. They were like the yeah. only person or the only entity putting on events. And now you look at them, they're like a fucking, I assume at least billion dollar company. Like oh, they're yeah. huge, right? Massive, yeah. Fucking Dogecoin's crazy. probably my best investment ever. I didn't make a ton of money, but percentage wise, it was really good. How, what, what I mean, I percentage? put in probably 40 bucks, 50 bucks, something like that. I forgot, I didn't even know I still had it. And then I had bought more either Bitcoin or ETH or something. And then I went in and I sold all my, all my ETH I'm tr I was in just Coinbase. This is like beginning of, probably beginning of 2020, then mid-2020. Okay. And um, so I was just moving stuff around and I thought I sold all of something. I think it was probably ETH. But then I still had like two grand in there. I was like, weird, what is this two grand? So my 20 bucks had turned into two Holy grand. And I was shit. like, yo, all right, this Did is cash out? I didn't even know I still had it. Yeah, I pulled it all out. <laughs> if I had kept it, it would have turned into like 20 or 30 grand, but oh well. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to be mad about that because I turned 20 bucks into two True. grand. So yeah. it's not like I made that much, made you know, two grand. It's a fucking lot of money. But I'll take it. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I bought it in like 20, I think around the same time as you, like sometime in 2020. And then I didn't find out until Dogecoin was at seven cents. So I got really lucky. I didn't find out because I pulled yeah. some out. Like I bought it like 0 .00, 0.00, whatever it was. Yeah. Uh, and then when it got to, I think, seven cents is when Devin called me. He said, yo, re-download Robinhood. And I was like, oh shit. And I downloaded it. And I was like, oh my Robin God, there's Hood, like so it, much money in here. And then I just like yeah. sold out on the way up. And um, I was able that's to dope. pull, like, I guess I, I basically accidentally pulled off what you would have done just because I wasn't paying attention until then. So I got really yeah, lucky. That's awesome. Um, but I couldn't imagine, like some, people were, like, some people were literally buying at 60 cents. And I'm like, what are you fucking doing? Like, it's been pumping for, like, six months straight, and now they're buying in. Yeah. Buying like, people top. right now, Steve so Aoki. Funny. Steve Aoki is, like, buying the top of every single NFT thing. You've heard of that trend? <laughs> yes. Oh, man. I didn't even heard of that guy. Steve Aoki. I still fucking barely know who he is. Like, who? Why is he so famous? Is he just a know. DJ? Some DJ. I don't know his story. I don't know how he got so big. Everyone yeah. knows him. Like, he's like super famous. Everybody and I was like, him. oh, okay. Like, he I rode didn't... the rode the crypto wave. That's for sure. Dude, yeah. He's taking advantage of that situation real well. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably just trying. I don't know. I don't really know his story. It is funny how he'll buy into stuff at the top though, and it flops. <laughs> he buy, the only things I know about him. Yeah, he buys the top, and then motherfucker throws cakes at people. Have you seen his <laughs> yeah, videos? I've seen that too. Dude, he throws like a straight arrow, and it hits someone right in the face every time. I'm like, wow. Yeah, he nails it. Like, dude, he's should really be a quarterback. Good. Yeah, he's really good, dude. He's really yeah. fucking good. Um, and so I had a specific question on, on Brand Teaching actually. I forget what it was now, but um, it's like dead sounds. I, I I have no idea what it was. Um, I don't know. Damn, that is so sad. It was a good question too, because I don't get to, I don't get a chance to talk to people who are running businesses and like actively doing it that often. Because especially in NFT land, I'm dealing yeah. with a bunch of people who say they have, or they did, they ran a multi-million dollar company. They don't anymore, but they won't leave the name of the company or like any other like credentials and stuff yeah. like that. Um, and then and then people you are do anonymous too or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's hard so, to know. Yeah. But you but you ran you ran the company for a long time, like in four years. Like what's changed since the beginning of the business being run versus now? You know, it's cool. We were, so we were at this agency event last, just this past weekend, so like three days ago. And it's so easy to feel like you have so far to go mm -hmm. and like you're failing all the time just because you see so many things that could be better. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not, it's not like you wake up every day and you're like, dang, like we're freaking <laughs> killing it. Like that's not how you normally, normally you wake up and there's fires to put out and yeah, you're like, man, every time. so much further ahead. But we were, there's all these people doing, you know, people that spend a million dollars a month in ad spend on Facebook, you know, people that are just playing at a high level. And so we're having conversations with these, with all these different agencies and whatnot. And there was this small agency there that was like two people, one of them was full-time, one of them was part-time. And it was exactly like when Austin and I, <laughs> you know, three and a half years ago. And um, they were like, man, we got so much from you guys. Like we didn't even know it was possible to get to your level. Like, man, if we could just aspire to be where you're at, like that blows my mind that that's even attainable. And it was a good reminder that like, man, like I'm so focused on what's next. How are we gonna get to this level? And we've got so many things that we're trying to like work on and figure out and make better. And so it's easy to get caught up in that and not take a second to reflect on like, 
hey, we actually built something cool. Like, yeah. we're actually in a dope studio right now. Like, we've got 18 employees that we're able to <laughs> help them pay their bills and, like, survive. And, like, you know, like, that's kind of cool. Like, we're, a, we're contributing to their life in a big way and adding value to all these people's lives and serving some really cool clients, you yeah. know? And so, um, I think that kind of, like, it's easy to lose perspective and forget about that kind of stuff. And I don't know, at the end of the day, it's at the end of the day, I'm not going to look back and be like, man, life was good. Cause I served this one really high profile client and that's dope. Like it's all about the relationship, the relationships and stuff you build along the way. Mm. We've been able to connect with some really cool people. We've been able to help a lot of people like grow their brands, like having a team of, we could make more money and have less employees and just like work our faces off. But like, yeah, it's cool to invest into people too and help other people level up and develop and grow. And, um, create opportunities for people and like and we're only growing at the level that we grow too like sure. I think if you're not constantly growing and pushing the needle like it doesn't it doesn't just grow by accident you know if you're in a leadership role and everybody's in a leadership role to some extent if you're a solopreneur and you're like launching an nft project like you're the leader of that community yeah, and, yeah you know right. whatever or you're leading yourself right at the very least and so but things things you are the cap of everything and so like it takes intentionality. I think everything's in a state of like constant decay, mm. right? Like <laughs> life is basically like a backwards elevator. <laughs> so if you're not like climbing forward and like rushing ahead, uh, at least trying to like actively climb and make progress, then you're like casually sliding backwards. So yeah. Yeah. And at the end you die, like no matter what. So it's like, well, right. you can at least make the time that you're actually crawling and like scrounging for shit, like a little bit better. Yeah. That's the way I look at it. Like yeah. if you're going to be here for a long, especially if you're going to, if you're going to be here like over a hundred year span, like you've been running the business for four years, which probably feels like a blink of an eye, but also you remember how long that took. And the fact that like you could do that over and over and over like 50 different times before you actually yeah. die. So it's actually a right. really long time. That's probably the biggest thing that Gary has pumped into my head. Yeah. He's like, you literally have so much more time than you think. Yeah. He's like, 20 years takes fucking forever, but it'll fly by once you're there. He's like, yeah. but it takes forever. He's like, it's a long time. It's so like, get your shit done. Like, do it now and like, yeah. start those things. Did you, did you have any of that before you started the business? Do you think Gary Vee, like, prompted you or were you just like, fuck it, let's just do this business. Let's do a <laughs> random, like, new entrepreneurship thing. I mean, I would say I've been entrepreneurial for a long time. So okay. as long as I can, like, I remember, I remember being 17, 18, going to college and Mark Zuckerberg comes out with Facebook and becomes a billionaire or whatever. And I'm like, this dude, like, I'm like, he's not any better than me. Like I can start a company and do, you know? And so I remember, mm. I remember thinking that when I'm 17, 18. So I've always had the mindset of that. And I think I, I met some business owners who had been athletes. I was a basketball player and they talked about, you know, Hey, business is like my new sport. And so I kind of thought about business as my new sport. Reason I, I only went to college for one year, studied design actually. And when I left, it was like, I'm going to start a business and work with designers and work around creatives, but I'm not necessarily going to be the designer, the creative. Yeah. And so I think I've had that mindset for a long time, but people like Gary Vee definitely helped me along that way and like fine tuned my, my like mindset and encouraged me and just helped me level up for sure. His yeah. books and podcasts. I mean, I don't know how many hours of Gary Vee I've had yelling <laughs> in my ear. I have so much dude. that guy. Like so much. That guy's, he's like a living legend. Like I, I really, I'm trying to think of like who compares to him. As far as like, so because he's taken over social media like that, um, like he's, he's hit on like so many fucking people, especially when you yeah. see like him at a, any kind of event and the people, the fact that there's hundreds of people like lined up just to say, you changed my life. Like, I really don't know who else on earth has that level of impact. Do you know of any? I mean, I don't think every, there's a lot of people that have had a huge amount of impact. He's a very visible, I mean, his whole thing is social media and brand, right? Yeah. And so he's way more visible than other people. There's a lot of people that have had I'm actually surprised how many people I interact with and I ask if they know Gary Vee and they have no idea who he is. Oh, really? I'm like surprised that that still happens, but that actually still happens a fair amount. Cause I always wonder how he does fucking garage talk, whatever it's called, like uh, trash <laughs> yeah. talk. At the, I'm like, motherfucker, yeah. if, if Gary pulls up in my garage cell, I'm freaking out. Like that's not like, a how thing. How do you not know this guy? I feel the same way, but there's <laughs> a lot like of people that still, crew. that like how many people don't have Instagram? Like we both know people that don't have Instagram and don't really pay attention to social media. And mm. it's like, if you're not on those platforms, so. There's, and you don't necessarily measure how much impact somebody's had by how much people know how much impact you've had, you know? Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of people that do it under the radar, don't necessarily have the brand to back it up. Like I'm talking to, um, well, one of the speakers is gonna be Garib Seamus at NFT Seattle. He was on my podcast and I talked to him just a couple of days ago and we were talking about, you know, topics and whatnot and just kind of catching up with him because he launched an NFT, Kumite. Let's go. Um, Hero Maker Studios, Kumite NFT, shout out to Garib. But, uh, so he, and he's somebody, I mean, he's a builder. So he founded Comic-Con, which is, I mean, they have like, have had hundreds of millions of people. The? Uh, 
V Comic Con. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, nice. So, and he's a doer. Like when, when there's somebody that's built something that's like that successful, has withstood the test of time, that's somebody whose project, he's not doing a cash grab. Right. This dude's not launching it just to try to make a million bucks and like screw people. Like, no, this dude's got a massive, not necessarily, not necessarily a massive brand, but like a massive community. Mm. But I've talked to multiple people that are like, yo, this dude is Gary Vee level without the brand. You know, mm. he's got 10,000 followers on Instagram or something. He just never invested into his brand before. But he's built an event that hundreds of millions of people have come through mm. over the past 20 years. You yeah. Know? So has he had the same amount of impact? Like probably, I don't know if he's had Gary Vee impact, but there's a lot of people that are really prolific or like amazing at what they do that just haven't been as like vocal and been in front of the camera as much as Gary. Bro, so what about you? Knows. Are you going to start documenting? Like you don't do too much I of that I need to put stuff. out more content, right? You should, bro. Because sure. you're, I don't know, like like everyone who's who's made it, they're like one big regret is they're like, I wish I had documented more. Like Alex Hormozzi yeah. is saying that right now. He's blowing True. the fuck up. Alex and Layla Hormozzi, if you guys haven't Love seen them. them, they're crushing the content game, yeah. but they literally were like, Alex, Alex on a podcast was like, yeah, I saw Kylie Jenner became a billionaire at like 21. He goes, and I realized that like, it's not because she knows more about business. She just leveraged her fucking audience. And then yeah. The Rock drops his, uh, his uh, tequila thing. And then, mm-hmm. then Conor McGregor with his uh, proper, proper 12. And he was just like, fuck me. Like, this is the thing that's missing. And so he's crushed yeah. ever since. Um, yeah. But I mean, you're going to be in that same fucking boat, dude, if you don't start put, putting out content. <laughs> I'm going to start putting out content soon, <laughs> for sure. I think that's going to be, I mean, most of my energy is either like building Brantegic or organizing NFT Seattle. And so the thought of like adding another thing, like I know True. document, not create, whatever, but it still takes time, you know? Yeah. I mean, it takes time even when you live in a freaking studio. <laughs> I don't live here, but I'm here a lot, you know? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so, but it still takes intentionality and time and effort. And so I think coming out of NFT Seattle and moving into next year, like this year, one of my focuses was getting a podcast off the ground. So that was, that was really fun and like a challenge. Where do you guys film that, by the way? Is that here? The podcast that you do? Um, I do that. I mean, I've done some in my office. A lot of them I'm just at home, but it's mostly on Zoom. Okay. Oh, okay. It's not really in person. Gotcha. Yeah. Or not Zoom. I use Riverside FM, but same difference. Bro, you got to get off Riverside. I'm sorry. Riverside, really? Do you know about the lag issues with Riverside? I've dealt with that. Yeah. It's terrible. It's, it's they're, really they're the only one who does that, by the way. Really? They're, they're miserable. I just did a podcast with someone and they had to cut my video. Yeah. They had to just put my profile picture on for the podcast because it no was way. like so terrible because I had a camera. Well, they got to do a better with. job editing if they... You know, well, no, it, it was the fact that like Riverside, it takes like an hour and a half for your video to upload, oh. but it does it bef- like you have to have it uploaded. Like the, um, the information has to be there by yeah. the time you start recording. So for me, it was like doing it and it was at like 10% by the time we ended because the quality is so high on the camera. Yeah. So they literally like when I closed out, it was just like 10% loaded. So they just got like a, like oh, a um, microwave version of it. So it looked like shit. And so they just like cut it out. But that's yeah. too bad. Yeah, I've had, I've had some issues with it too. Yeah, actually. you should get on Zencaster. Zencaster is really, really good for, for non lives. If you want to cool. use like live stream, I would say Restream or this new one that I'll send you. I forget what it's called. And then if you're not doing live, like Zoom's okay. Yeah. But for some reason, I feel like Zencaster is just so good. It's high quality, Zencaster, keeps the, the quality nice. better. Okay. So That's I'll send you those things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I got you. But yeah, so I mean, content, like I put out more this year than I did last year for sure. Um, but I haven't been super, I haven't been putting out consistent content. Yeah. So I think next year. Um, I think, I think part of it too is figuring out exactly what, what's my brand, like what do I want it to be? Because I'm kind of in this like divided space where like when I'm here, like I'm, I'm social media and content and whatnot, right? And then when we're talking, we're talking about Web3 and NFTs yeah. and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> That's true. And so I don't want to like send mixed signals and messaging and like confuse, not like my audience, but just figure out like, okay, I need to put out content. Like if I'm building this event and then obviously I'm here like, building Brandtegic and so um, just getting clear on like what what do I actually want to put out content that's not like um, super divided mm-hmm. you know what I mean like yeah if I all if I was just like all nft and web3 then that's not really relevant for what I'm doing 90 percent of the time mm-hmm. you know so I don't really want to do that but I do like nfts and web3 and like I'm organizing <laughs> nft Seattle it's like sure that's something I'm passionate about and I think it's super like exciting and that's a big part of my life too so I'm just trying to figure out how to balance that and how to like what are my content pillars? What am I putting yeah. out? And so maybe what, just put out all of it. I don't know. What are, yeah. So here's like a weird thought press thought loop we can go down. Like if, yeah. if NFT Seattle, if and when Seattle, uh, NFT Seattle crushes it. Yeah. And this is a big success. Now you got a lot of people getting your attention here. You've, yeah. you've uh, become someone here, but then you've also got the company that you spend a large majority of your time. Now what happens? Do you outsource and make both happen? Do you focus that's, less on one? Do you know? I, that's what we got to figure out. Fuck. I know. Damn. Yeah. Do the people on yeah. brand on brand Tijic, are they web three at all? Or are they like not really? Um, I mean, there's like we're gonna have people from from brand Tijic that are filming content at the mm-hmm. event for sure. So we'll leverage some of our resources for that. Um, 
but we, we're not like doing anything necessarily that is Web3. Beyond like, if I was an NFT project right now, then I would definitely be leveraging video content yeah. to build my brand. I don't see too many people doing that. We could totally partner up with, like we could help Web3 brands grow for sure through what we're doing, but yeah. we're not doing anything that's like specifically Web3 related. You know what I mean? So. Well, yeah, and, and honestly, like I almost started my own like little agency of sorts before I realized the demand wasn't there. Like how you just said, projects aren't doing video, yeah. and they also don't see the value of it, which is why they're not doing it, right? Yeah. And so, like when I'm like, hey, um, I'm on TikTok every single day. I've, I, I keep up with the trends. I don't do it as much because I mainly post the podcast show clips now. Yeah. But there was a period where I was uh, still uploading like, a ton of TikToks, so I'd still film, and I was all over TikTok. And since I was posting every hour, I would end up scrolling for a few minutes every single time. So I got I, like. Yeah. Destroyed my mental health, but also got a good finger on the pulse of what TikTok was looking for. Mm -hmm. And so I started to put some feelers out there and realized that none of the projects were interested. They didn't see the value that you get out of having a bit of content, staying up with trends and getting a community yeah. online. And I was like, dude, I think you're making like a big mistake by not focusing on these things. Totally. Like what is the longevity of these projects without it? Right. You know? Yeah. I mean, I think if you're, if you're all about like a community and a brand and like influencing culture and all that stuff, like. I don't know, to me, people, people generally buy from people that they know, like, and trust. Yeah. And how do you scale that? Like, you can scale that on Twitter for sure through just your voice, but I think there's something more personal about seeing somebody's face and seeing their expressions and all that, right? And so yeah. I think you can scale it way more. Like, there's a lot of people that I meet. I don't even put out content that consistently. I'm sure you get this all the time. Pe people meet you for the first time, and they feel like they know you. That's because well, I've seen big. so much of your content. In, in New York, I had, I had like four people. Yeah. Four separate people, which is more than I've ever in my fucking life had. Yeah. But yeah, they did know, they, well, they knew the glasses mainly. But, they know um, the glasses, but, right. but yeah. then they're like, dude, what's up, man? Like, yeah. they feel like they, it's like, oh, I've never met you before. I forgot about that, <laughs> you know? Um, and so I think if you can do that at scale, it's hard to do that in person, you know? Yeah. It's hard to do that by shaking hands. You can only shake so many hands, but even if you've got a thousand followers and you're putting out video content, like when's the last time you spoke in a room in front of a thousand people? Or in front of so, two cameras. Like, yeah. honestly, it's, it's a little bit different. Like, one thing I noticed here in, in real life, I feel like I maybe ramble more because I'm a little bit more anxious than I normally would be because I'm not in my normal setting. I'm in this studio that is weird because when I walked in, um, <laughs> it's actually super weird because I just did a podcast with NFT Donut. His name's Caleb. Yeah. And he was t we were talking about, like, what are the things that you visualize if you do to, like, help your success and manifest and stuff. Yeah. And one of them is like almost exactly what this building is. Like a super open space, yeah. a lot of random rooms and tables and like space to like do things and like, oh, there's a new project today. Like, go oh, make it happen over there. That's exactly what I look for. So when I walked in, I was like, what the hell? It's like, this is exactly what it was. So that shit was kind of crazy for me. But yeah, it's a totally different environment than what I'm used yeah. to. Yeah, for sure. There's, I mean, that, and that can, that can throw you off. Like if you're speaking on stage and you're not constantly speaking on stage and then yeah. you get in, in front of a new Looking stage you don't, people, you're, you're like, like yo what is this but <laughs> once you've done it then you don't really need to like go get prepped or whatever because you're just comfortable you're used yeah. to it you dude know, honestly so. I, I draw a lot on past experiences of like I would feel things like super like if I was really anxious I was like really anxious so I remember yeah. in college I took a public speaking class with the worst decision ever but it was the best thing <laughs> ever happened because like, yeah. I don't remember anything but I remember how fucking uncomfortable I was and like I'm saying in front I remember this so vividly I'm standing uh, at the front of the class and my heart is pounding so fast that my yeah. actual body is in my whole body is doing doing this Dang. and I'm trying to do a speech and I'm like I can't get my voice to relax because my whole body's shaking I'm like so macronutrients, I started this thing on, on fitness. I'm like, yo, stop fucking shaking. Stop fucking shaking. I can't because I'm so fucking nervous. Yeah. And now I'm here. I'm like, my body's like stoic because I've done so many podcasts. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That's it's awesome. so weird, bro. Do you, still, do you still like fight through anxiety? And how do you like, how do you approach anxiety or how do you deal with that? Uh, on podcast specifically or just, just in general? In general. Yeah. Um, well, for podcasting, I just do it because uh, for me, it's, it's really nice when I have like a, a deadline. I'm like, okay, at five o'clock, we're filming this. Like yeah. the, no matter what happens at five o'clock, we do, we do the podcast. So for me, right. it's just like, I know if I show up, it'll be fine. So for me, those aren't as big of a deal. For me, my, my anxiety comes a lot from procrastination because I know I can get things done. So a lot of times like I'll waste five hours out of my day because mm -hmm. I know at the end of me wasting five hours, I'll still pump out that video and still get everything done. Yeah. But for me, it's really hard because I get that like lack of motivation almost because I don't know what it is. I think um, I've been sprinting for, for so long that I'm like tired a little bit. I'm like, yeah. fuck, like I feel like I should be here and I'm not here and I, I should be all these things. So with anxiety, I usually deal with it just by um, leaning on how I felt in the past because like I was saying with the speaking and I was so nervous, mm -hmm. I can remember what that's like and how awful that sucked. 
And I'm yeah. like, okay, I just don't really want to be back there. So like, what does it take for me to not be in that kind of situation again? And for me, it's just like having a little bit more freedom, some uh, financial freedom would be great because then you can just do whatever you want for the most part. Um, and so I think I, I do that. I just draw on like the past experience of how I felt and then yeah. what the things I want in my future. And one of the things was literally like manifesting this. Sometimes I'll close my eyes and like manifest like an open space, like me sitting yeah. in a chair in my desk in my room, but then being like, oh, there's like an entire open foyer with like super nice marble countertops or something like that and a fucking yeah. air fryer and then like Uber Eats insiders, just weird shit like That's that. That's so funny. But yeah. I just like manifest those things. So have you done that? Anything like manifesting? Yeah, I mean, even like this morning I was thinking through like, Okay, what's the, it's, it's easy to think about like, what's the worst case scenario in any situation? You know, yeah. and I think this morning I, I tweeted at like 4.30 a.m. because I woke <laughs> up and I was thinking about this. And I tweeted, like, sometimes you got to give yourself permission to dream about like, what's actually the best case scenario and then allow yourself to mm. expect that. Because if you're not intentional with your mindset, it's easy to default to like worrying about worst case scenario and then getting anxiety from that. So yeah. whether it's, like whether it's hosting NFT Seattle, like, oh man, what if like people don't show up and Tom comes and he has a terrible experience and like you start building this story of like, what if? Yeah. But then I was like, what if it goes amazing? Like what if Tom comes and he's like, dude, that was the best audience I've ever spoken in front of. Yeah. You know, like what if people leave and they're like, yo, I got this connection. This turned into this amazing business that we were able to start and that never would have happened if we weren't at that event. Like I think you can just like think through, you can use your imagination in a positive or a negative way. Yeah. And I'm, I'm preaching to myself right now because it's easy for me to slip into like the the negative, but manifesting is not like I've done the whole, what's it called? Where you're saying affirmations and that kind of stuff, stuff that you don't really believe, but you're speaking out loud. And that, I don't know, that really never worked that much for me, but I think allowing yourself to just like dream in a positive way and ideate around what's the best possible case scenario and what could be if everything goes even better than I expect and just allowing yourself to dream. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it can be easy to in business, at least what I've found, it's easy to dream that way before you've started, <laughs> you know? Like you dream uh, about all the good stuff before you actually start doing the thing, right? Yeah, because it sucks. And like, then when shit hits the fan, then it's hard to live in that like optimistic state of yeah. all the dreams again, because then you're confronted with the reality of like, oh man, we gotta deal with this and I gotta organize that and I gotta think about these things and who's mm -hmm. gonna take care of it. And then it's so easy to get like bogged down with all the minutia. So if you can still like carve out time and prioritize allowing yourself to like stay in that high, higher level like dream state or like visioneering state yeah. and creating out of your imagination versus creating out of your past and your experiences and all that kind of stuff. I think that's, I think that's huge. So whether you call it manifesting or visioning or, yeah. you know, whatever it is, but yeah, that's really powerful. I think, um, I actually made a video where I said something along those lines too, when I was living in Colorado and it was, <laughs> I took, I took acid and I, um, <laughs> that night just like walked around like the whole neighborhood for like four hours. And then I was sitting there as the sun was setting or the moon was coming, I forget what it was, and I took this photo and I was like, man, I could just like, I could leave like right now. I, I could just like go, to, like I wanna go to Seattle so bad, but I'm worried like, you know, the market's slowed down, so I'm a little bit nervous about like, you know, money, I'm just worried about just in general. I hadn't taken a yeah. risk in a while, I'd been in Colorado, I got comfortable. And um, I was like, fuck it dude, like what if I just book the ticket and I go there and I find an apartment I like and it's affordable mm -hmm. and I find a place that I like, and it's chill and like everything works out and I just come back and I move. I was like, what if that happened? And I was like, yo, that could happen actually. And I just like thought about it. I was like, yo, yeah. that actually is very possible. That's like a 50-50 chance almost of happening. Yeah. And I was like, okay, fuck it. So I just went and bought the ticket, go there. Of course, I find a fucking apartment. I, like You look at like six different apartments. It's not like Seattle's like New York where there's a million people trying to move in every single day. There's definitely yeah. people trying to move here, but it wasn't that crazy. So like after like two apartments, I found one. And I was like, oh. Yeah, I was like way easier than I thought it was gonna be. And I was like, wait, that, that's it. And I had like three more days here and I was like, wait, it was like so easy that I was done after like the first day. And um, I was like, shit, like that's actually right. That's and so funny. Yeah, how, how often for yourself are you noticing that? Like I'll slip into <clears throat> versions of myself that is way more pessimistic. And then, but the same version of me an hour later could be super motivated and be like, yeah. I'm, I'm about this life. And then like an hour later, for I was sure. like, bro, fuck, I don't wanna do this anymore. I think it, that's like, there's, there's actually this podcast. I think it was by... Jocko Willink and maybe Andy Frisella, mm -hmm. I forget, but they talk about the di dichotomy of leadership because it's always both. You're not, and, and I think both are relevant. Like you need to prepare for the worst, but expect the best, right? And so you're like kind of living in both places always at the same time. Mm -hmm. And even if you, yeah, so I think, I think your, our default, well, my default is probably, I would say there's, there's times in my life where I've defaulted towards optimistic but that's not always based in reality, right? And mm -hmm. so you're like living in the clouds, you're like super optimistic all the time, but you don't have a whole lot of experience to back it up and it's probably not super 
like realistic as much as I dislike that, but it's like, okay, well you're probably a little too, you know, it's not, not actually going to work out that way. Then there's times where I'm like very realistic and maybe pessimistic or negative, Mm. but then you get these like glimpses of, you know, the dreams or whatever could happen. Right. So yeah, I think it's, I think it's a balance. I think there's both are going to exist and it's like whichever one you feed and focus on and allow yourself to like live in and spend time with. What what do you love about it? Like, is it the entrepreneur journey? Like some people are really big on the journey. And for me, it's, it's almost hard to picture that until I'm at a place where like in my head, I'm always like, until I'm fully financially free, there's yeah. always gonna be a part of me nagging. But like, I like making videos so much and I've made videos for 10 years and like none of them ever got views. So I'm totally cool making videos that don't get views because yeah. I like doing it. What is that for you? Is business the game that you love? It's a good question. You know, I'm trying to, I think in some ways I'm trying to figure that out mm-hmm. right now. Like, what is it that I'm really good at? What is it that I really enjoy? Like, what's my thing, you know? Yeah. Um, and I don't know that I necessarily have a good answer for that other than I think I'm driven in some ways by the fear of like not reaching the potential that I know I'm capable of, mm-hmm. like not becoming who I could be. Um, I think I'm driven by that. I'm driven by wanting to, like you said, financial freedom, like wanting to create this like beautiful vision of a future that I have for myself, for my future family. Like I'm single, no kids, nothing like that right now, but like I've got a big vision for what I want to create and for like being able to just have an impact on the people that I love. And I think deep down, I know, like I know that I can do it. Yeah. I know that I can build an incredible life that allows me to have huge impact, make a massive difference in the lives of people that I care about. And so to me, it's like, I can't settle for less than that. Like, I know I can do that. Mm-hmm. And so I don't know exactly what, it, so I think there's that like, just fire within. And there's times where I'm like, man, I wish I would just like, I think Gary Vee talks about this too. He's like, man, sometimes I wish I was just comfortable, like yeah. <laughs> making 35 grand a year, hanging out, sitting on the couch, watching TV every night. Like life is good and I'm happy. And if you are happy doing that, like that's amazing. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. But there's this like, fire inside that does not allow me to like <laughs> settle if you want to call it that like that's I don't know if it's settling that's just not in in line with like the highest version of myself that I believe I'm capable of and so do you, do you are you more lit than you were four years ago or do you think the fire was bigger right when you started or is there like no difference basically it's like no nah, I'm still the same kind of thing so I was wondering that's I'm not far along question yeah no that's a really good question I think it I don't know I mean, the same fire is still there for sure. Yeah. But there's, I think you go through seasons or like you go through seasons, you get rained on a lot. The fire yeah. gets a little bit dim, but it's still, the pilot light hasn't gone out. Mm-hmm. You know, if you get beaten down too much, maybe the pilot light can go out and then you have to like really go through a massive life change, to like relit the fire, yeah. you know, cause then you can, you know, people will go through like you get burned X amount of times. You go through like another divorce and a, another business that goes bang, like people get hit with life and then sometimes it goes out, you know? So I haven't been through that much stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and then there's like, what's the, what's the Bible verse that says, um, a heart or a, a vision deferred makes the heart grow sick or something like that. Like if you're chasing something for long enough and you don't reach it, like you keep getting let down, then I think it can go like, that could be a negative, you yeah. know? And then like the fire gets smaller, like the burning, like I would say for me, I, I got into kind of a funk when I hit 30 because there for a long time, I was like, yo, by the time I'm 30, I'm going to be so stupid rich. Like, it's not even going to be funny. When did you get to a point where you're like, all right, I got some money. Dude, I'm still trying to get some money. <laughs> yeah, but like you have a I fucking, mean, there's, bro, there's levels. But you have a fucking house, like a full house here, basically. Like a, a house for like it's 25 true. kids can live here at least. I mean, that's, that's like I said earlier of, there's people that, that see when they're like, man, I can't even, like, I can't even imagine getting on your level, right? <laughs> yeah, that's me right like, now. I, <laughs> like, and I own a home that I bought a year and a half ago in Seattle, which is like crazy expensive. You know what I mean? So, and I've got a, I've got like a dope Jeep and like, I'm, so you're right. Like it's, yeah. you got to give yourself some credit sometimes, but I don't feel that way. And I should, I should rest in that sometimes and be like, Hey, let's like take, you know, let's take a toll of the things that you've like yeah. actually accomplished and the, the wins you've actually stacked up. And I think that's a good thing. Do, do you often practice. like, has the mindset changed at all s- since you were able to like, okay, now I can afford a home, now I can get a car. It's like, oh, I've had basically all the fundamental basic things that people who suffer some, from some kind of life insecurity, like most of them are like, okay, like once I have a house, once I have this, once I have this, I'll be a little bit less stressed all the time. Do you notice that like your basic stress level is any different or is it the same? Um, I would not say that it is less, no. I think it's maybe the same. Bro, oh, fuck. Are you you know? Me? Shit. I was hoping you would say that. I, I mean, so <laughs> let me, there's, there's times where my stress has probably been a little bit less. You know, like there was a time where I got, I got totally debt free 
and like was putting money in the bank, had zero debt. Life was a little bit boring, mm -hmm. you know, but my stress oh. was not there. Right. Yeah. But then there was a little bit of discomfort of like, man, like I'm playing a little too small. Like I, I would kind of crave the risk, mm -hmm. right. Of doing something again. And then you buy a house. Well, that's crazy expensive, you know, and like a nicer car. And then you're like throwing a big event and a business. And then yeah. you're like putting money into this business and all. And then it's like, then you have all these like weights that are like weighing on you. Right. And mm -hmm. liabilities or responsibilities that you're carrying. And so even though you've got the basics, it's like, it's not like there's less stress. Yeah. It's like there's more stress, but I think some level of stress is good. Sure. So there's been seasons where you get some money in and it's like, it's been a little bit less stressful. And then there's times where you kind of put yourself back in the stress game. I mean, maybe right. the stress is different, but there's still plenty I guess of stress. Like, yeah, I guess it's always just stress though. Like it's basically yeah. just stressful. Like no matter what, like no matter how you play, like when you have something like NFTC, yeah, I imagine like the days leading up, you're like, can this just fucking get here already? <laughs> <laughs> like I'm stoked for it. Am I, I'm excited for it to end in the sense that like, I know it's going to be like, I'm going to be relieved. Yeah when it like works out, goes really good. And then it's not like every night then for the past six months or whatever that I've been like staying up late, like working on yeah. it, waking up early. Like it's the first thought in your mind of like, okay, what about the, I got to do this. And like, you know, so there's just so much that goes into it. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to have like a little break from that, but I know that it's not like I'm just not going to do anything with the time after work sure. and I'm going to get off work and it's going to be 5 PM. And I'm like, no, I'm just going to like, I'll do that for a few days or a few weeks or I don't know. And then it's going to be like, all right, like, what am I building now? You know, and like, what's the next, you know? And so I think I'm just wired that way. And Dude, so, I'm so happy you are because there's like, times where I wish, like I wasn't, I'm like, yeah. man, <laughs> this is so stressful. Like, this is hard. Like, why do I put myself through this? And like, can I just like relax? Yeah. But I don't know. There's, there's times where, and I, I would say too, there's seasons of life where like, yeah, if I was married and had kids, I would probably be making different decisions. But right now is the time where I can burn the candle at both ends if I want to. And um, that's not sustainable. Like what I'm doing right now, I wouldn't be doing that if I had a family. Sure. You know, like yeah. I would be having to make different choices and prioritize different things and have time with the kids. And, you know, I'm in a position right now where like, luckily I can do that and I can choose to spend my time how I want. And so, mm. um, do you do this partially cause you want to provide for like a family? For sure. Yeah. Mm. That definitely drives me. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's probably a pretty big, like almost subconscious one. You're like, if I'm taken care of, then I can take care of like someone else or yeah. even if it's like a dog or like, I remember when I was in college, like a vivid memory, <laughs> I was like, I was painfully wrapped around this girl's finger. She was so out of my <laughs> league, but I was just like, that's I don't even care. Like yeah. there was multiple times where like, I was sitting there looking at her. I'm like, yeah, this is going to end very bad for me. <laughs> and I cannot help myself. Like I literally can't help myself. I, I don't care. And so I like went down this rabbit hole of a year long relationship with this, with this girl, she, super great person, you know, wish her all the best and stuff. But the relationship yeah. was super bad. It was a super toxic relationship. Yeah. She was definitely in a higher position than I was in the relationship. Yeah. So there's a point, I forget if this was because she wanted it, but I ended up getting a dog and I was just like 24 hours into having this dog and like had bought the fucking dog bed. <laughs> um, and, and I like been to work and I was like, I'm home a lot though. Like it should be no problem. I'm in this apartment. And then like, the second I like signed my name and like walked out of the pound, I was like, that was a bad idea. And I remember like, we're like walking out and I'm like holding hands with like my girlfriend and I'm like walking to my car. We're about to go to Petco or something. And I'm yeah. sitting there going like, yo, I just fucked myself in every direction and I don't know how to get it. And I didn't have to take, it was the worst thing. I had to take the dog back. So I was like, I'm 20, I was like 19 or something. Yeah. Like I can't take this, carry this big dog in a huge apartment. So I was like, that guy it was miserable. Like one of the worst days of my life. Like I never, I haven't cried in forever. And like I fucking sobbed like at that point. Cause was, I think I had the dog for like three or four days at that point. Yeah. And I just felt so fucking bad. Cause I was like, the dog is st definitely happier than at my apartment than at the, at the pound. But I was still like, bro, this is not possible. I'm 19, and I, uh, yeah. I didn't realize that this level of responsibility exists <laughs> on this fucking earth. <laughs> like, so that's so bitch, funny. Dude. Yeah, that's yeah there's, every once in a while you see a cute dog, and you're like, oh, man, I want to get a dog. That'd be awesome. And then it's like, dude, that's going to be a, so much. Res I, I like have to talk myself down from things like yeah. that, for sure. Do you, how old do you feel inside? I always wondered this, because some people, I met a, my boss at Loggerhead's restaurant. He was 40-something, potentially 50-something. Yeah. But he told me he feels 17. And I don't feel 17. I'm 24 and I feel probably closer to 22 than I do 17. Hmm. Like, do you have like an internal clock where you're like, I'm probably this mature. I mean, there's like, when I turned 30, I was like, I should be 30. Like I <laughs> felt like I was 30 for a long time. Really? You know? Okay. Just in the sense of, okay, I've, I typically surround myself with people that are older than me. Mm. Like from a, I think from a maturity standpoint, not like I'm like uber mature, Sure. but I didn't, you know, when I was 21, I wasn't like, Oh, I'm 21. Like, <laughs> let's go for a party. Like that wasn't yeah. my scene, you know? So I think in some ways I felt way older from a, 
you know, from a health standpoint or like vitality standpoint, like I would like to think I don't feel 33. Um, Can you run around and jump and stuff? Your yeah, back I mean, hurt? Not, nothing like that. Not too bad. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it's a little different than it used to be <laughs> for sure. But like, I mean, I ran five miles on Saturday and let's go I can get out and I don't, I don't run consistently, but I was with Austin and we we're in Nashville and, uh, and he was like, he ran seven. I jumped on a scooter for two <laughs> miles. Cause I was like, dude, screw this. Like, what were you guys doing in Tennessee? So we were there at that uh, agency event. Oh, yeah, okay, like okay. It was, so it was basically right. like an entrepreneur conference just for people specifically building uh, marketing agencies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's so, very cool. Yeah, I should probably um, go with more of those. Honestly. Yeah, there's, I mean, getting in a room with people that are just like further along, further along the path than you are in what you're trying to do is, is I mean, it's valuable. Yeah, it gives, I just it hate gives the small you some talk. Good you're, you know? you're right. You're absolutely right. Because so. like, it's the small talk that I, that I dread, yeah. I think. Because like, once you're there and you're talking to someone that does the same shit that you do, that likes the same shit that you do, it's always going to be a good time. And like for yeah. me, like with that NFT uh, social event, I'm sitting yeah. there, I'm like on the uh, outside. I'm not anxious because I'm, I'm able to turn on my, ex, my extrovert whenever I need to. Right. But it's like the leading up, I'm just like, oh, I really, really don't want to have to do this though. Yeah. But as soon as I'm in there, you're right. Like I perk up instantly. The second that's I say like, hi to someone. That's like going on a date. You go on a date and you're like, is this just going to be stupid small talk? where I'm like, we're both charismatic and like extroverted enough where we bad, can go though, and dude. we can make it good. Yeah. That's just, the problem. That's literally the problem. But then you leave and though. you're like, that was such a waste of time. <laughs> that's, what, you know? that's what happened, bro. I felt yeah. so bad. I just remember like getting on the date and like immediately thinking, ah. Oh, like so I'm going to have fun much. because I can make this fun, but yeah. like I'm already over it. Yeah. Yeah. I've noticed that uh, in my dating life. I just, I think I'm in the, my, my sprint phase. I'm like, I don't know how long the sprint phase lasts, but I'm definitely in some version of a sprint phase. And I'm like, yeah. I'm sure I could set aside time. Like, like you said, if you had a family, you'd have to set aside time or right. like not do it the same way you're doing it now. And in my head, I'm just like, yeah, I don't want to though. Yeah. Like when I'm, when I'm bored and I don't want to do anything, like I naturally will go drift to things that are work related just because mm -hmm. I can, I think. And I yeah. want, and I know like to build something, there is a period of that. Like just like you said, like there is sure. a period where you kind of have to put blinders on yeah, and just totally. do your thing. And like, and like you said, 33 earlier, as if that was like old, but like you, I would have, well, one, I thought you were 25 or something, but like also like when I look at that, that's 10, that's almost 10 year gap. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay, shit. Like he's like crushing it still. He's not like giving up on his dreams. He's like, oh, like I'm 35 or 33 years old. Like it's too late for me now. Like it's not yeah. like that. And then like Gary's 50 something and he's still like, he keeps saying, I'm just getting started. I'm like, motherfucker, totally. are you for real? <laughs> like you're just yeah, getting right? started. And I'm like, okay. Like, that's how I feel for sure. Okay. Like just getting started, man. Let. All right. Yeah. That's good. That's yeah, really yeah. good. Um, fire. Okay. Well, look, I want to do some rapid fire Q and A. Cool. You want to try to do it? All right. Yeah. I love these. These are my fucking favorites. Honestly, it's like my, almost my favorite part of doing the podcast. Cause Let's I also go. don't want to go too long here. Cause I know you got shit to do. Um, where's it at? Here it is. This has been fun. Hopefully you're, hopefully you're getting a couple of nuggets out of this. Dude, I fucking hope so. Honestly, the only thing I'm thinking about is audio. I'm like just praying all that stuff's good to go. Yeah, it should be. So uh, but that's the only thing I'm thinking of. Okay. Here's, here's a good one. I love asking this question. Actually, you got any like Super weird, guilty pleasures that people don't know about. <laughs> Super weird, guilty pleasures. You know what? I really, I personally really enjoy taking baths. Really? Yeah. I mean, I don't know if that's like a weird, guilty pleasure. Just like less dudes are into that, you know? Like um, That's true. But like back in the, I say back in the day because I haven't done this in a long time. I've done it like in the past probably six months, but it's been a little while. But I would literally, I would, I would cook a pizza and I would get like a glass of wine and then I would take a bath and watch, like, put yo. on a show. And I'm like, yo, this is a good... Actually, last time I uh, was going to do that, I got home and my house actually got broken into. Holy it, shit. It, it, yeah. So this was last October, actually. So that was, okay. that's a whole other crazy story. We can yeah. get into it if you want. But I'm down, dude. Like, um, go for it. Dude, this is, this is some crazy shit. If you want to tell it, I'm definitely down here. <laughs> okay, I'll tell it real quick. <laughs> Anyways, it had been a long week. And I was like, all right, you know what? I never do this. Tonight's the night. Like <laughs> I'm taking a bath. I'm making a pizza. And let's like, go. So that was, that was the plan. That's, that's a guilty pleasure for sure. And then if you're, eat, if you're eating pizza in a bathtub, like, I don't know, life is pretty good, you know? Yeah. But, uh, so that was, that was the plan for that night. It was just like a stressful, like long week. I was over it and I get home. My front door is unlocked. Like, that's so weird. Like I never unlock, I never leave my door unlocked. Mm -hmm. I walk in, I actually walked to my side door because I thought I had some packages delivered. I checked a couple packages there, so I grab them. I've got a roommate, guy that rents for me. So I go to his room, open his door, and there's stuff like everywhere. I'm like, dude, Fuck. are you good, bro? Like, what happened? And it hasn't really clicked yet. I'm like, it's starting to creep in my mind that maybe I got broken into, yeah. but I still, I'm like, no, like, I don't think so. I think I just left my door open. Um, but then I open my door, 
and then shit is everywhere. In my, and I'm like, oh my gosh, dude. I, I'm like, okay, if somebody broke in, what, what are they gonna steal? TV. Walk in the living room, TV's gone. I'm like, okay. <laughs> All right, so then how did they, and I'm like thinking about it. I'm like, dude, I know I locked my front door. So I, I had definitely locked my front door. I remember specifically I had to go back because I was carrying a bunch of stuff. I couldn't get it locked. Put all my stuff in my car, went back to the front door, locked it. So then I'm checking every window, I'm checking every door, thinking, how did these guys get in here? And cops come, detective comes. We circle the whole house, same thing. There's a little crawl space under the house. We even go down there. There's like a pin that normally locks the door that was just sitting on the ground. I say it locks, it just kind of secures it, just drop it in. That was sitting on the ground, but looked fine. We're back in the house talking, and then one of them's, hey, what's all this stuff on the floor? Go in the laundry room, and there's sawdust everywhere, and there's a hole in the floor. And then I look down. I keep all my yard tools under my house in the crawl space. I see my chainsaw sitting there. So they had gone in my crawl space, taken my chainsaw, chainsawed through my floor, up into my house, wow. <laughs> stole all my shit, and walked out the front door. Dude. Yeah. What Needless to say, fuck? I did not take a bath or eat pizza that night. I was at a police station until like one in the morning. So anyways. Oh, that's yeah. fucked. That was kind of a wild story. That is absolutely fucked right there. <laughs> and honestly, if you're, especially yeah. if, I mean, it doesn't sound like this guy was like a homeless person, but I was going to say that's like a way better situation to just like sit there and like almost like live there instead yeah, of trying to break in. Like what did so you, they stole the TV? What else? TV, golf clubs. They stole golf a bunch clubs. of clothes. They stole like a bunch of weird stuff too. Like did they stole we didn't have anything like super crazy, like tech stuff? crazy valuable. No. They stole my passport. That was kind of annoying. Mm. Um, but yeah, nothing, nothing life changing. Yeah. Dude, that's fucking scary right there. That's really scary. Feel a little I've, violated. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. yeah. I, the only experience I have with anything like that would be, um, I think I just told this on a podcast too, which is interesting. I've only told this story like once ever was um, my roommate was a pretty big dealer and uh, that was back in Charleston and yeah. he never really been robbed because we were in college. So like all our clients were just like, hot girls <laughs> like everyone like they're yeah. all just stars like all all his client base is that basically <laughs> so it was chill like we had we, we were like at the trap house though yeah. definitely like we were definitely the trap house and so we probably have like 10 to 40 people a day coming in to just come in quickly do a little thing yeah and so when one day he's like yo and this is when i was big i was like super jacked like way bigger than i am right nice. now <laughs> and uh, he goes yo i don't know this person coming he's buying stuff for me i've never met him before and i forget why he even did this he never does this but he was like just like hang out just stand there like as if you're a bodyguard or something you don't have to say anything just stand there in the corner yeah so i do it and i wasn't even paying attention because i just wasn't thinking about it and i think i was just like on my phone and i just hear like a big wad of cash hit the ground and then i hear like this is all like in a split second i hear the, the uh, stuff hit the ground and then like scurry of feet and i look as i'm looking up i see my roommate pull a fucking knife at his hand and I look at the door, the door's open, being swung open as I'm looking up like this and the guy's taking off outside. And he's like, motherfucker, and he chases out and I'm like, whoa, oh at this point God. I was like, holy shit. So I run out there and by the time I'm outside, I look and the guy's like in a getaway car, like, like fucking speeding away. And David's like, get the fuck back here, like holding a knife in his hand. I was like, what the fuck just happened? He like runs back, he's like, that guy just robbed me. What the fuck? And I was like, oh my God, what happened? Apparently the guy just like had him, handed him some, uh, Money was like supposed to be a few hundred dollars or something or a few thousand dollars. And it was like all fake cash or like pieces of paper. Yeah. And then just like a bill on the top kind of thing, like super all fake. Dang. And he basically just like grabbed the weed and took it and ran. And so, but yeah, I just like, it just got robbed right there. I mean, I didn't get robbed, but I was sitting yeah, in that yeah, situation. Yeah. That should have changed you a little bit. That was scary. Yeah. But fuck, that's nothing like that though. Where, <laughs> I mean, I wasn't even part of it, but you got your shit taken. I didn't get anything yeah, taken. Did. That shit yeah. was scary. Yeah. All right, that was crazy. I wasn't expecting that kind of story. There you go. <laughs> Okay, do you have a favorite alcohol? Uh, you know what? I like a, I like a dirty martini with three dirty olives. Dirty martini? Really? Yeah, it's my go-to drink. That's a go-to drink for you? Yeah. Fuck. All right. The one I know of is the... Uh, Tito's Vodka. Tito's Vodka. Okay. The one I know of is Espresso Martini. The only martini oh, I... Yeah. I don't even know if I've tried that, actually. I'm pretty sure I got a shitty one when I was in New York. <laughs> but yeah. um, what, what even is a martini? What's in that? There's... So it's basically vodka and then olive juice. That's yeah. what makes it dirty. Yeah. Some people put vermouth. I don't. Okay. But yeah, just olive juice and vodka, basically, and then throw a couple olives in there, and you're good. Is Shake it classy? It is that what you drink it, or you like the it's taste? Kind of classy, but I like the taste. Oh, you I like really the taste? like olives, like green olives. Yeah. Mm, mm. Yeah, I'm not a huge drinker. I've, I've done a little bit and of it's beers. Just, it's but... clean. Like, there's no sugar in it, really. I mean, beyond alcohol, I guess alcohol is sugar, depending on how you look at it. But true, true, true. Yeah, I, I'm not a huge like drinker. I like. Yeah. Fucking like, I like tequila, I guess, but it's because I just got used to it, I think. And then, um, yeah, like margaritas, tequilas. There's a couple of beers that I like, but they're either sours or they're like some kind of specific, 
yeah, like cider or, or sour beer on it. So like, it's only the yeah. taste of beer. Do you like beer? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Sometimes, like I like a Corona on a hot day. You're on the beach. You put a lime in there. Like I like that. Yeah. But I don't. People that just sit there and drink like six pack of beer, like I can't do that. Yeah, I can't do that. Is Seattle, do you know Seattle's known for like breweries? We got quite specifically? a few. Yeah. Are they known for people it? like craft really? beer out here? IPAs, that kind of stuff. I'm not really a big IPA guy. If I do get a beer, normally it's something blonde and pale and yeah. easy to drink, you know? <laughs> that's very true. That's very true. I'm trying to think what we got when we not were at one that. one of those things that tastes like a pine cone. Yeah, well, that's, that, I think that's what I got last yeah. time because we had met up somewhere with two other guys. One of the guys actually was, um, wasn't it, wasn't it uh, he was like friends with one of the founders of a big project. Oh, yeah. Well, do you remember what it was? I can't remember what it was. I don't know if he, did he tell us? He told us. I, there was one, a couple. I, one, he wouldn't tell us. There's another one. I forget which one it was. But. And I also don't remember if he wanted to I think it was Cool Cats. Was it, was it Cool Cats? I think it was Cool Cats. I think it was like his roommate. Found yeah, cool like cats. His, yeah, yeah. I think it was his roommate. Knew, yeah, yeah. So it was something weird like that. It's yeah. pretty crazy. That was a, a wild. Then there's some other ones where he's like, yeah, you guys definitely know this project, and, but I'm not going to tell you guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, there's some degeneracy. And like right now, I don't know if you know, there was a project called Lady Ape Yacht Club, something like Lady Ape something. Yeah. And it's been trending top 10 on OpenSea for like two weeks now by wash trading. Like whoever's in charge of the project has lots of money. Yeah. So every single sale is like 40 ETH, 30 ETH, 40 ETH, but they're not real sales. They're all just people trading amongst each other. But yeah. they paid me for a brutally honest review. So for people who don't know, that's my, one of my main income sources is my brutally honest reviews. So new projects, I've just done so many of them that it's all inbound requests from people who watch my videos. So they found my channel and were like, yo, we want you to do a review. And at that point I didn't know this project, uh, anything about it. I just saw it trending. And I was like, oh, that's weird. I've never had a top 20 mm. project like or like a top 10 trending project come up to me because they don't need the attention. It's not like yeah. I'm bringing in tens of thousands of views. I was like, okay, whatever, like, sure, I'll do the review. And so they sent me half the money uh, up front and then half the money after, which I typically don't do. But I was like, whatever, it's fine. I'm interested anyway. So yeah. did the review and I do it. And I'm like, wait a second, like, they're wash trading. I was like, what the fuck? And I, so I'm like, okay, so they know it's a review. And I was like, all right, well, I'll just film the video anyway. So I filmed the video in the middle of it. I'm like, okay, so... There's lots of weird, sketchy-looking trades here. This guy broke it down on Twitter. It seems to be some kind of wash trading. Here's it goes to all these accounts and explain the whole thing. Like a t I didn't make it like a big deal, but I was like, yeah, this is wash trading. And I post the video unlisted, and they asked me to send it to them, which I typically don't do again. But I was like, okay, this is a special situation because they're definitely like rugging people, and it's like kind of fucked. <laughs> yeah. So I got to figure out a way around this because I'm gonna post it, yeah. and they're gonna get roasted, which is not what they wanted. And I was like, okay, so like let's see what we can do. So I sent them the video, and they didn't even fucking argue it, dude. They were just like hey, we'd rather you just not post it. And they're like, just pretend like we didn't hire you. And I was like, I'll do that if you send me the rest of the money because yeah. we agreed on it or I'm going to post it. Like, yeah. I'm just going to post it. And they're like, no, no, please don't fucking post this. They ended up just paying me. <laughs> they literally paid for my rent in one video. Dang. It was fucking, it was fucking One video sad. that you didn't even post. Yeah, because they basically, well, they, I think they, I forget if it was that project, but they basically paid me like two and a half times what I was supposed to get because I was at a leverage point there. I was like, look, you guys are screw, actively going to screw people over. Yeah. Um, and so I'm either going to not post this at all, you're going to pay me like we we're supposed to, or I'm just gonna post it. And that was like a super weird situation. I've never been in that situation. Um, yeah. I've had a couple where people are yelling at me where I do the review and they get really upset at my huh. review because they're like- It's called brut brutally honest review. That's what I fucking that's said. That's the point. I was like, didn't you, didn't you know that? You're not that? paying me to shill your stuff. You're paying me to yeah. do a review. I don't know, that's, that's how I've always done it. It's yeah. always been reviews and plus, especially if they watching it, I'm like, yo, you know it's an honest review. So I don't know what you're thinking. <laughs> He's like, I don't know why you gave me all these pieces of advice. Like, of course I know these things. Like, why aren't you just like promoting the, the project? And I was like, yo, that's not what this is. Like, that's what are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, that's why you paid me to do it. And that's literally all of Web3 right now. That's literally that's all so of Web3. Uh, okay, here's, yeah. here's a goal. We'll, we'll end okay. on this one. This is what I'm really interested in. If, well, I guess we can go either one. Do you have any weird dreams that you always come back to or recurring dreams, weird dreams, or do you have a conspiracy theory that you think is absolutely true? Maybe an unpopular opinion or something, something Man. like that. I don't have a consistent, I have lots of weird dreams and I always write them down because if you don't write them down, you forget them you forget two it. minutes later. But they are, I just have weird dreams and there's like no meaning or consistency to it. They're just out of the blue. Yeah, so not a consistent one that I come back to. Conspiracy theories, um, man. Aliens definitely exist. For sure. That's for sure. Um, I'm actually going to be, so this girl that I dated last year, still like, love her. She's awesome. Just, she doesn't want to have more kids and she moved across the country and whatever. So um, she's, she's like all about alien life form and stuff. <laughs> she's like all about these. She has a whole podcast diving into oh, conspiracies. Oh shit, she's a podcast. So she's like deep into, uh, yeah, she's, she's deep into all the conspiracies anyways. Um, but she literally texted me today and she's like, Hey, I'm with these people that, um, 
put out this Netflix special on Alien Lifeform, and I'm actually going to work with them to hopefully put together an event. If you want to come, you can be part of the team, and like we can go like try to like seek out aliens Holy and stuff shit. together. So we'll see what happens. Dude, yeah. But um, I'm pretty stoked about it. I'm like, she's talking to him next week to finalize details, let me know when the event is and that kind of stuff. And then I'll be like part of the team to help put the event together and, and like contribute to it Dude. and find some aliens, you know? That's so, fucking lit. Yeah, yeah. And honestly, that actually brings something in my head a little bit about like your natural skills. Like I guess they would, they see your, the value that you have as an entrepreneur, as someone who's just like able to pivot and do things in a business sense that for you to like come on actually helps them. Like there's actual value there. And it's kind of like how you were talking about you were like struggling to figure out like where you could potentially fit in or like where your brand is, like what you're trying to accomplish. Because like one of the things for me, I was like, I just like being on camera. Like I like when the lights are on and like yeah. things recording, but that's yeah. like my favorite part. Like I like it, like editing is fine after because I can like control how it comes out and like I have control over how the video comes out. So I like that part too a little bit. It's just tedious. But then yeah. like I like the video portion. Some people hate this part. Like Tom doesn't like to be on camera that much. That, sure. This other guy that I film with a lot, and he's, he's, more, he's remote. But he's like, anytime I have to film a video, I get all this anxiety, I gotta plan the whole thing, I gotta write down every single thing I'm gonna write down. Um, Cause I don't like when the camera's on, I just get like whatever. And so for me, I like doing the camera stuff. But for you, like you seem to like at least like the business, like your day-to-day -day shit. Yeah. And I assume that they're trying to get you because they're like, yo, this guy's effective as fuck, and he's cool, he's fun, he's like, you know, extrovert and stuff. So that could be a position where you're like that guy who people hire on. Like Greg Norman's like that. He went to like three different NFT projects because he's just so good at the CEO position. Sure. You know, yeah. so could yeah. be cool shit. But Jay, uh, Aliens is your big one? I guess so. I mean, I think 9-11 was definitely an inside job. Like there was a lot mm. of weird stuff that happened with that. So I'm a believer about that. How about like- Aliens um, for sure. Earth, like there's like hollow earth theory. There's a hollow, earth, hollow moon theory. There's a holographic moon theory. What do you think about those? <laughs> I don't know enough about those. I, I don't believe any. I mean, I haven't researched any of them, <laughs> but I'm not like into any of those. How about Antarctica? You heard about that one? Tell me about it. Dude, the Antarctica, there's people who like think Antarctica is like some kind of hub for like basically how people think of the moon as like some central base yeah. for like aliens. They think Antarctica is like the base for like Illuminati and like all these like weird crazy shit. Cause like no one's out there. Yeah. There's only scientists out there and people are like. Makes sense. Cause you can go there, but nobody goes there. Yeah, you know, that's one of my life limits. goals. It's one of my life goals to do a podcast out there in the snow. That'd be dope. Yeah, they be just, cool. uh, one of my friends invited me to take a trip to Antarctica in, I think, January of this year. But it was like 15 grand. It was like super expensive. Oh. But they just built this like crazy new cruise liner. It was like the first one. Like literally you're sitting on a hot tub <laughs> out there checking out Antarctica and like all of this dude. nature around you. Like it was a dope, dope trip. He's like, dude, this is a trip of a lifetime. Like, yeah. Um, they ended, for some reason, they ended up canceling or pushing it back, or maybe he just canceled. I don't remember. He ended up not going. But, mm -hmm. um, anyways, that would be dope to yeah. go down there. Just cool. the insane amount of wildlife and for sure, for sure, yeah, that'd be really cool. Yeah. Well, so I want to end this on uh, you giving a tip about entrepreneurship, but I was going to ask one last thing in regards to like I know you said when you were 18 you went into business and that you were like okay I think business is the game I want to try and win. Yeah. Before that though, were you doing like lemonade stand stuff too? Yeah. Like, was that you as a kid? For sure. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was printing up flyers, passing them around like on a bike, getting landscaping jobs. I created a whole bunch of paper airplanes and I literally <laughs> was like, dude, I'm gonna sell these paper airplanes. Not a lemonade stand, a paper airplane stand. I never actually put together a stand for it, <laughs> but I started creating paper airplanes thinking like, dude, I'm gonna sell these for like 50 cents. So wow. I just, I always had like ideas like that, you know? That's so crazy. I just like, I didn't get introduced to money like that, I guess. Like I always am fascinated by this shit because I know a lot of people who are like that. And I'm like, bro, I didn't think about money like that until I was at least like, yeah. 20 or something like 21, 22, something like super fucking yeah. recently, like in the last few years. And like before that, like not a thought, like I was either thinking about soccer or the gym or like yeah. trying to get girls or something, but like money and making money was, it was like, Oh, like I'll just work that job and make some money. Yeah. But like I guess I was never driven by like, I don't know. It's like that game. Like it's almost like how you said, it's like a game of business that you're trying to win. Yeah. And like how much can I do this and like get this much money and then build something else and then flip something and like wholesale. You're doing like the wholesaling stuff, like flipping. Uh, very little. Mm. I think when I was in third grade, I bought some, I remember these USB drives and it was Black <laughs> Friday. I woke up at like four in the morning to go to Best Buy. Let's go. And I bought, all, I bought like eight of these USB drives because that's probably all that I could afford because they were like 20 bucks. Then I jumped on eBay and sold them for like 60. Whoa. So you make 40 bucks times eight. What was that, like 320 bucks? So take out shipping costs. I probably made like 250 bucks. 
in a day and I was like, yo, this is awesome. <laughs> so that's, that's really the only thing I did. I mean, I did a couple things on eBay, but I didn't consistently do a lot of it. Yeah, I did, I did one, fl one big flip. I flipped a home gym. I paid like, it was like my scariest thing I've ever done. Like I paid like $500 for the gym. Yeah. Now I'm like, oh, I have this fucking home gym in my garage. I'm like, <laughs> fuck, what do I do with this thing? But I, I ended up making like three or four X on it. And I was like, nice. that was terrifying though. Like, I, I don't know what it is. Like some people are built for that. Some people have like a natural risk tolerance too, where they're like, yeah. that wasn't so bad. For me, it was like very high risk. Um, and for me, like I, my natural mode is like content creation. Some people's natural mode is more of a business sense. Yeah. And I think for me, it's always just been video. So I'm trying to figure out how myself as a, cause I know you have to make yourself a business in some way. Like you have to brand yourself as a business entity too, yeah. to like make it. And I was wondering, this would be like my last like business question for you from your perspective as a, someone who comes from business, where do you think I would have the best success pivoting, I guess, or like using the skills that I have to monetize more or monetize better? Yeah. I mean, I think you're doing it. I think just stick with what you're doing. Like, if you like putting out content and being on camera and video and like building a platform, like that's a great way to make money, mm. you know? And so, and you, you've picked a niche that where there's a lot of opportunity, yeah. right? With Web3 and NFT specifically. So, I mean, I feel like you're, you're on the right track. Keep doing that, keep putting yourself out there. And I think the opportunities will come, okay. you know? So I don't think there's anything where it's like, man, if you were just more focused on making money, you'd make more money. Like. Maybe, you know, I, w I mean, the only thing I would say is just talk to other people that have been doing it mm -hmm. and learn from what they're doing. You know, like if, you're t if you talk to a Vanessa Lau or you talk to um, Noah Kagan or you talk to one of these guys that's crushing it on YouTube, like listen to what Mr. Beast is doing. Just surround yeah. yourself with people that are like in that game. Like you've been, you've been wanting to become a YouTuber, right? Like mm -hmm. become a podcaster, like build a, a platform in that way. And so, I mean, if that's what you like, that's a great way to make money. It's fun. You enjoy doing it. You're working crazy hours, and that's what you think yeah. about when you're not doing it. So, like, I would say stick with it. Keep doing what you're doing. You're in the right. You're in like, I don't want to say the right. It's not like there's one right niche, but you're in a niche that's dope. Obviously, that's why we're talking about it. Yeah. You know, NFTs, Web three. It's up and coming. That's why I'm putting together this event. That's why you're building your show. So, I mean, I say stick with it, and then just surround yourself with people that are further along than you are that you can you can learn from. So, legend. That'd be, that'd be my advice. Legendary advice, bro. You want to shout out anybody at the very end? Shout out anybody, shout out yourself. Dude, shout out Cade. Shout out Cade. <laughs> Enjoy his kingdom, baby. Shout out to this guy. Let's fucking go. I appreciate it. Yeah, Thank man. You. That was appreciate a great time. You. That was Thanks, fucking man. awesome. Guys, uh, make sure you smash like in this video, subscribe to the channel. I have his stuff down below in the description too. And uh, what else? Code word, if you made it to the very end. Code word, fuck, NFT Seattle, I guess. We just put that energy out there. Let's go. I yeah. like it. Code word, NFT Seattle. Let's make that shit happen. Follow me on Twitter. What, what happens Discord if down below the description. Word. Code, code words just, I mainly put it there just to see who's watching, to see who cares. There's not like anything you get. At some point, I'd love to make it one of those things where like every single video, I do a small giveaway, some kind of giveaway, whether cool. it's money or a hoodie or like something cool to build the brand. I think that'd be a really good thing to do. Yeah. Um, but I'm not at that point yet. Like I can't afford to just give away something when I'm posting <laughs> twice a day. <laughs> but yeah. Anyways, guys, smash hey, like. On that, NFT Seattle, since that's the keyword, I'll give away a free ticket. That oh, could be shit. your giveaway on this one. Okay. There you go. My it's, man. It's hidden in the video. So okay. Code word. Gets a free ticket. That's actually crazy because if we do that, if we do it, should we do it with like someone who does the code word? Yeah. Because if that happens, it'll literally be between like a few people, like a small, small group That's great. of people. That's first, a great idea. First one to do it gets the, gets the ticket. That's some king shit. Cool. Guys. I like it. Uh, well, comment that shit down below if you made it to the end. Congratulations if you made it to the end because you're going to be in like a pool of a very, <laughs> very small amount of people. So yeah. Until next time, continue on your joy age, continue to learn, and we're grateful you're alive watching this video. Bye.